surprising. But Brentford yeah. have that in them. They've got it in them to, to spring a surprise on any of the good teams. You're looking at City's lineup, though, with De Bruyne back in, um, obviously Erling Haaland back in. It looks amazing, doesn't it? I mean, that is a proper strong team. If they have this team from now to the end of the season, that'll take some stopping. Yeah, I mean, Brentford hoping City maybe don't fire on all cylinders, maybe a bit of ring rust from, from one or two. Yeah, possibly. I mean, Haaland's uh, back. You wouldn't expect him to to not score. I never, every game that he plays, you just think he's, gonna, he's just going to get at least one chance in this team. I mean, it must be an absolute dream for a centre forward because he doesn't, he rarely gets involved in the build-up play. He wouldn't say it's his forte, he's would not, you? He's not, he's not great at that, but he knows that at some point during the game, there's going to be a chance where they get in down one of the inside channels, somebody's going to cut it back and he'll have a tap in. So, obviously, Alfie is his old man. You must have played against him, Tis. Yes, I did. Um, I played with Alfie at Man City. He was fantastically fit, really good player. Played, yeah. obviously, full-back, wide midfield, centre midfield. Yeah. I think he could do centre-half for the push. And I just wonder, you know, and obviously you come from a bit of a footballing family in terms of, um, you know, older brothers, as you say, played and, and give you the rough and tumble. <laughs> How much of an advantage do you think it would be for a striker to have a dad who was a full-back type midfielder? Maybe tell them what kind of runs to... I think it'd be a, be a big advantage, actually. Um, so I used to, when we were um, messing about in training, um, you know, in pre-season and stuff, and it wasn't particularly important... Oh. Um, I always used to go and play in different positions just, okay. for, just for the hell of it, just to see what so it was like. So are you like. almost like Renus Michels, total football with that Ajax team, that every player could play every different position? And I think, I think to a certain extent you should have players who can play in more than one position. Because the, the Ajax system, they play all the kids coming through in different positions to give them an appreciation for and what... I, and I think that's really important. That's one of the, the tips that I give to kids. Uh, if you know, if parents ask me for some advice for youngsters, um, if like, if they're a centre forward, I'll I'll say to them, go and play centre back, and just see what gives you a problem, and give you an insight into just what positions you should be taking up that's going to make things awkward for for centre backs, and just your your opposite number, go and play in the opposite position than you do, and I think it gives you a really good insight and a little bit of knowledge as to just how much of a problem you can cause people just by positions that you take up you know you said before yeah. when you played on the right side of midfield you know I just got a stand where he would compromise exactly the defensive line or exactly. something if you haven't got if he's quicker than you you have to you have to give him different problems and and you do you take up positions where he's not sure if he needs to go to you well that's that's the thing I found it's interesting to listen to you talk about Alan Ball um, I found I played my best football when it was simple. Like I'd say to Dan, Danny Simpson, whoever was the fullback, look, if I'm inside here and I'm not marked, give me it, I'll get turned. And then they had Andy Carroll or Shoulder at me, Obi or yeah. whatever striker. If I'm inside and the fullback's up my arse, yeah. clip it over my head because that means he's out of the space and we'll chase that in the channel, centre forward, and I'll follow around. Yeah. Or, you know, like if, if, um, if I pass it back to you, just flip it back over him and I'll go and get this it was like four set piece moves and yeah. it was at Premier League level and you're saying they're ball you're just saying when you get it get him the ball when we haven't got it get in position and be in a position to affect them yeah. and there's something to be said for simplicity is genius certainly definitely. when it comes to football definitely do you think it's too overcomplicated now with I all the data some... and science yeah and... I think it does get overcomplicated a little bit I think there's too much reliance on on data stuff really and, and not I think we almost take data over what your eyes are actually telling you because the data is all well and good but it doesn't always tell the whole story of a football match yeah well well, this is the thing isn't it you need to you know the eight old adage of having the technology and the objective data there to, to give you a reading but also your intuition and your, yeah. your time saved and your experience people call it kind of spider senses sometimes that you know, sometimes you just see a player move and you're just like, he just moves well. Yeah. You know, sometimes you watch a player and no matter how many times you watch him and, and how the data says, you just can't really buy into it. Yeah. Haaland, for me, is an effective, efficient, goal-scoring phenomenon. Machine. Yeah, a phenomenon. <laughs> I mean, you look at Haaland and Mbappe as the kind of heirs to Messi, Ronaldo's rivalry. Yeah, I don't Who think, would you take I out the two of them? I 
depends what you're looking for in your team, doesn't it? Um, because if you if you're a team like Man City who have got talent all over the pitch, and you know you're going to create chances in the game, or you know that when you're playing against a lot of teams, they're going to sit in in their shape and try and bore you to death, and, and you've got to try and un unlock something. You may only get one chance in a game, and you need somebody like a Haaland there to, to stick it in. Um, so He's a classical number nine, isn't he? He, I know is, he's, he is, but, but he's that kind of where Mbappe can play off the side. You couldn't ever imagine Erling Haaland playing off a side. That is no, he? Mbappe's got, obviously, I think, infinitely more natural football ability. Ooh. What a player he is, Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne oh. for me, two of my favourite footballers to watch play football. And they Rodri shite artists. at the base of oh, it yeah. as well, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you only appreciate just how good a player he is when he's not there. And when that Man City team don't have him in the team, they don't look they look a shadow of just how good they can be. There's that little in the inside channel, cut back to Haaland. And it was a very good block actually. Yeah. I mean he's a fantastic footballer and a great finisher and he's gonna score millions of goals, but really he's got to sort his barnet out, hasn't he? Ben Meek playing against City, yeah, his barnet is um very Norse <laughs> very Viking uh, invader, isn't it? But um yeah. Oh I don't think he's um, like missed the beat since he's got here. Like he's literally like some strikers take a bit of time to adjust. You know, I've seen great strikers in the past who've taken a little bit of time. I um, I was doing the uh, bit of Bundesliga coverage for a company called Mola um, after I got sacked from Sky, and uh, so I was watching quite a bit of the of the Dortmund games, and I was just so impressed with this lad. And um, when Man City signed him, I did a, on the on the start of that season, about four days before the start of the season, I did an evening in Southampton, um, like a preview to the Premier League season. And the, the host asked me at the end of the evening, he said, if, you, if you're going to put any money on something for this season, you know, if you had to put your mortgage on, what would you be? I said, I'll tell you now, get all the money you can get and put it on. Harland to be the top scorer in the Premier League this season. Yeah, he's you almost, just, almost you built just for it. See, he... Yeah, he had everything, all the attributes you needed. You could just see it wasn't he wasn't going to need any time to settle. Yeah, it was just so obvious to me. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it, it, size wise, what is he six four, six five, and it, it, his efficiency of movement that yeah. gets me. Clearly, he thinks a lot about the game and he's developed it. Then you've got, as I say, this this fella underneath him. Oh. Oh, that's good defending that. Score, score predictions? No, we, I haven't had a bet. Score predictions? I would, just because of the calibre of player that's out here, and obviously last season's results, expect City to win this. I'm going to go, you know, back five. Brentford will try and keep it tight. I, I think 4 0 City. Ooh. Yeah, I think just it might nice be a big little pitch. Bit tighter than that. I think I'd go. 2-0 City I mean I'll be happy with my fantasy footy because I've got Edison in goal and I've got uh, did you do that Harland. do you? yeah I'll get involved with these and then if I get me captain every week this it just costs me money I've never done it I've... these play it like religiously um, they do all the right transfers at the right time and then I get sidetracked gardening or <laughs> golfing and before I know it the deadline's passed and uh, my captain isn't who I wanted it to be um, I, I had, I had, you know, light, light bit of fun, mate. Not too serious. Yeah. Um, My mate actually won uh, <clears throat> back in the day. You know the hello, oh, what a save, save. Yeah. the uh, the Sun Dream Team thing. All oh, right, it was like hundred grand first prize. Yeah. My mate won it a few yeah, years yeah. ago. They must yeah, have yeah. you in the team because you were always worth a few. Uh, I think it was just after I retired that he won. Oh, right. Actually, that's that's. So do you remember some a guy commitment? Called, do you remember a guy called Dennis Rofe? No. He was a fullback, played for Birmingham, and he was my coach at Southampton, and it was his son okay. that won the Andrew Gren. Yeah. Some claims of fame now. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of players he had to be. Yeah. Well, they, they go mad for it now. <laughs> He's a good player, Alvarez, I like him. He's a clever take from them, wouldn't he? Straight out of South America. Yeah. They've just done another one, haven't they? They've taken someone else straight out of South America, River Plate or something, City. That's not, central that's not midfielder. the 18-year-old who's just had the heart scare on the pitch, is it? Oh, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully not. Um, I'm sure City have just taken because Alvarez usually half million. <clears throat> usually they, they allow them to go to Europe and then they'll buy them out with Benfica or Porto or 
or whatever development league but with with Alvarez they took him straight out of uh, South America and again he's I think he benefited from Fabio was it Echeverri? okay yeah oh god I didn't know that so I seen him take him was that only last week and then he's had a heart scare this week yeah that was on the 2nd of February yeah that's like becoming more regular test than um, than any of us would like that yeah more regular I mean I, I, mean, I played <coughs> with Mark Vivian Fowl who passed away at the Confederations Cup at, through a heart murmur and I remember Fabrice Mwamba and I remember you know the odd the odd scare but it tended to be people with certain genetics from a certain yeah. part of the world that were getting it and now it's just all over the place everyone and, and yeah, I mean the scary thing is it's when you know how fit the lads are and the demands that are placed on on a professional athlete. Yeah, because yeah. I don't, I don't remember in my career, not one. Well, it was the guy you said from FIFA Pro who rang you, and you were saying, "Can you name anyone?" And he and, and they couldn't. No, Bobby Barnes. Yeah. Well, that was the only. And I heard you mention uh, Mark. Yeah, that was after. I, that was the year after I retired. Mark was, and then. Was there not something with Teddy? Did Teddy Yarov's lad die? Of, Something young. I remember that being on the telly. Is that not? Was he a young, promising footballer? Oh, hello. Here we this? go. It's tight, Here we that. go. Here we go. Oh, I think he's just off, you know, but yeah, he was you're just right. off, but it was tight. The, these things with um, the high lines now, you know, people squeezing VAR high lines. Um, would you? Would you play a high line in the lower leagues if you didn't, or back in the day you didn't have a... Do you know what? I've watched a couple of teams do that, try and do that at Southampton, and they just get caught out so many times. I think if you've got the VAR, you can be braver because you're always going to get that objective check yeah. after, but um, obviously in, when it's fucking Keystone Cops down in, <laughs> in, the, lower, in the lower leagues... And just did, you, did you find the standard of officiating in the lower leagues that much worse than the Premier League, or...? Yeah, well, I'm in the part time, the lads there, so the, the, you know there is some better ones, but on the whole, you know, it's such a random. You, you know, you don't get consistency from week to week because you know some some lads are working, some 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 lasses are working or whatever. But um, you know, you see how how tough it is for the Premier League boys. Oh, I thought he was going to hit that. Could save again, lad. Um, See how tough it is for the Premier League with all the PGA or PGMOL and all the VAR and the technology, and, and they yeah. don't know their arse from their elbow. What chance of the lads who've got to work a job, yeah, and then rush to a match? Um, What's the system with those? Uh, do you do you do they get assessed every week by not just the the assessors, but do, do you have to put a report in as a manager? Yeah, and it used the to. Yeah, I, I think some of the managers like us. Would use that as a oh, good hit. Oh. Tell you what, he's on fire, the keeper, didn't he? Yeah. Flecking, they've just been nailing him before, saying how poor he was yeah. and how, how much better Ray it is than him. And he's obviously must have heard that in the tunnel. Did you, oh, did you find that strike. hard about um, uh, critiquing players and criticizing players and them moaning and maybe getting the knickers in a twist? Because we're a temperamental bunch, aren't we, footballers? <laughs> yeah. We don't like it when people say nice things about us, really. Yeah, I tried not to dig players out, really. It's tough, because though, isn't it? Because you're trying to give a, an opinion. You give an opinion, yeah, but there's a way, I think there's a way you can do it without being disrespectful, you know? You've got to remember that to get to play in the Premier League, you know, you've got to be... You're in the top 1%. Of not, footballers on the planet. Not if you if you listen to people on social media or people who haven't played because they're like you're bang average, you're shit, and you're like you're, you're like do you know how hard it is just to I know that to play a season they up there. Yeah, they have no idea how much goes into getting themselves into that position in the first place. And then place. stay in there. Um, so oh, hello. he's crap, isn't he? Ugh. De Bruyne, awful ball. <laughs> So yeah, what was that? Well, it's easier with it off, is it? Yeah. Um, um, is there any of them Madrid's left? Yeah. Tish, you want for a drink, mate? Do you want a water or a soft drink? Or? If you've got one, yeah, I'll have one of those. Have you got, you got a Malibu? Yeah. Good oh. lad. How did you end up on the Malibu? Where'd that come from? Just like the well, sweet. I don't really like alcohol. All right. 
And it was the only thing that I tasted that didn't really taste like alcohol. It's like right. sweet and... So it's like a day, yeah, day yeah, coke like a, in a Malibu you know, or your full you fat coke? Your full fat coke. Oh, you right. just, just, if you pop that in there, you can, you know, you barely taste the Malibu. Yeah, so you're like, you're having a soft drink. Yeah, it's like pop. That's not a bad thing, Tester. And so, yeah, I never... Because you uh, will have come alcohol. from a big era of drinking, a big drinking culture, especially with Southampton before you got there. Is that Mick Channon and... That was before I got there. So well, actually, yeah, the good team still... there, Keegan and all that. Yeah, there was the remnants of that team were left there. So Peter Shilton was in goal. Shilts, yeah. Um, well, how did he, he get just... all them down there? Was there a big load of money that came in to the club or something? No, it, all those names came at the end of their careers. All right. So they were kind of past their best, but they just all kind of gelled. I think Kevin Keegan had a bit. Of, I think a local business sponsored his wages when he came in. Because he was like European Player of the Year at the time or something. He was just oh, right. he'd come back mental. from Hamburg or something, had he? Yeah. Is that what he came back to, Southampton? Yeah. Yeah, it's a strange one to come back, isn't it? Yeah, it was. And that w- that was another thing when I said to you, COVID, seeing the response, but also when Kevin gave me my debut and managed me at Newcastle again a bit later on. <clears throat> and um, when he came out and he, I thought he said it as politely as he could about the women ex-players who were commentating on the men's game. And they all just got right after him, and I, I thought, that's a nice man who's tried to say it as polite. And you've just, and you were like, call him a dinosaur. And I'm like, he's a, won the Ballon d'Or twice. He's managed England. He's like creating one of the best Newcastle teams, you know, never best teams never to win anything. Like, yeah. like, come on. Um, how do you find, like, as as a as someone who's played the game, how how do you find when you're here? someone who hasn't played the game's opinion never mind that the female or male so like your mates down the pub you you know we've all got someone we play golf with who I'm, like yeah. a game of footy and a strong opinions i'm quite i'm quite tolerant with people i don't i've got a, obviously a, a strong opinion if we're talking about something and football wise I don't. I, I like to give my opinion, but I'll give my opinion in just the same way that he'll give his, well, and just let everybody else decide around the table. So you must have been in dressing. So we've been in dressing room in good teams. Like you, you obviously, the same players who you go, yeah, we'll listen to him, and there's other players who yeah, you're yeah. like, listen, we're not fucking listening to him. They've yeah. got a clue, um, and they're not necessarily always the best players no like sometimes the best players don't know why they're actually really good they're yeah, just that's, really good yeah that's true and um, that's kind of one of the reasons why I didn't go into coaching is because a lot of the time that I was doing stuff there was so, it was so instinctive that I don't think I could teach that to anybody okay. and and I think I would have got the, the worst bit for me I think would have been the frustration at being so close to the pitch and not being able to get on it and and do something and make a difference I think that was that was one of the things that put me off the most about coaching and managing is I'm that close to and I can't do anything about it yeah uh, no one asked me a question me. today Tis where he said uh, did you miss it and I was like yeah but only when I'm playing when I was playing it well do you mean it? Yeah. Like I wouldn't miss it. It's like being a. I said to Noah, it's like being a golfer, and you used to be able to hit it 330 yards, and now you're getting it like 270. Yeah. Like you know, you're still enjoying it, but you're like, I used to get it out there, so, you know, and and this is what I think people miss with it is, you know, yet it is about lots of things, but a big factor is your physicality, yeah. what you physically can run. You know, would you have been you wouldn't have been aware, you wouldn't have been data packs in the back. Did you have any awareness no. of what you ran on, on on the average game? No idea. What you judged on? Whether you've produced, whether you scored, whether you affected the game? I was produced on, uh, on did I score? Did I set up a chance for somebody? And would you be given? Because I imagine we see highlights real, but and and I know obviously long long old season. Would you be given? Um, a little bit of a leeway by the rest of the team if you went through a bit oh, of a uh, lead spell. He's got to score. He's got to score. Ah, great he finish. Scored. Couldn't score for Everton. Get in. Couldn't score for Everton. Couldn't hit a cow's ass with a banjo for Everton. Got chased <laughs> out of town. Scoring against Man City. Some people just are comfortable at certain clubs. Yeah. And to be fair to Brentford, they, they play these teams. They'll go five, three, two, and they'll 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 be tight, compact, and then they'll try and pick it off on the on the break. 
Yeah. Whether it's in Buemo, he's not playing today, or he'd gone back from Opai, horses for courses, and yeah. then obviously Big Tony coming back. He, he's he's been a, I think a great advert for the football pyramid. When I first went to Fleetwood Tiss, he was on loan at Scunthorpe, I think from New was uh, Newcastle, and then Peterborough bought him, and then to be fair, he. A little bit like Vardy in a way. He hasn't he hasn't looked back since he started scoring in the Prem, has he? Oh, I was going to tell you a story about that. So, you, you know, you're on about criticising players and things. So I, I, I didn't really criticise a lot of players, but I was at I was at the game at St Mary's when Vardy uh, deliberately did Van Dyke when Van Dyke was at Southampton. Deliberately and, did and him in terms of like just it, went late on him. Yeah, went yeah. late on him and did him and, and put him out for the rest of the season, like four months. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Van Dyke missed the League Cup final because of it. We, we got beat by Man United in the League Cup final. And um, and I went on Sky and I, and I said, I didn't like what I saw. So, cause, uh, I didn't say this very often, I said, but Vardy deliberately did Van Dyke. I said, bang out of order. So anyway, <laughs> fast forward about a year. I was in that, me and Franny were agents for a little bit. Um, we had a few young lads, and one of them was at Leicester. And I was going up to to visit him, and I was at the Leicester training ground. And uh, the youth team coach was sat in the canteen at Leicester's training ground, and uh, it was it was the coach, the lad that we were looking after. And Vardy was the other side of the coach, and I came in the canteen to speak to the lad and and, uh, and the, the youth team coach. When I walked in, I said hello to to Matt and uh, and the coach, and the coach went, Vardy, bet you wouldn't have minded being on the end of a few of his passes like that, right? Vardy, nothing, blank. <laughs> Didn't say hello to me. Didn't acknowledge me. Nothing. <laughs> I just completely custom pied that the coach must have felt unbelievably awkward. In sat there like, like, <laughs> <laughs> so it absolutely the canteen. Pied me because I'd slaughtered him on Sky. <laughs> it, 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 that, like, oh, oh it? no! What are you doing? Oh, oh, oh save keeper. Oh, they, I tell you what, they they the keeper off yeah. and he's having a blinder. Who wants oh, David yeah. Raya? I had Martinelli because I forgot to change it. My 4-0's out the window. I fancy City to trounce these. But the keeper's decided to have the game of his, uh, his life and prove all the, <laughs> the commentator's case of the... Just goes to show how much we know. The stats, yeah. 2-0 and 4-0. <sighs> He's got a score, that's poor. <sighs> that's that's in Is that a bit ring rusty? He's, He's on his left foot as well, and he? Ring rusty. Where did he want to be? Oh. He's, tele he's telegraphed it a little bit. Tess, I'm, I'm happy if, if, I, if I get in there. Weirdly, I was a really good finisher, but I had no fucking pace to get in there. Um, <laughs> oh. Ivan Tony considered a top penalty taker. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not a technique that I would ever have tried, if I'm honest. I think it's a bit... It's a little bit risky in terms of... If you miss, you look a bit foolish. I take it he's watching the keeper all yeah. as long as he possibly watching can. The keeper, yeah. I mean, it's when it when it works, it looks really good. But you know, Jorginho was really good at it. So I, I always remember Yakubu used to do it when he was at he? Everton and Portsmouth. He used to wait and wait mm. and wait. Like the best penalty taker I remember watching growing up was Beppe Signori. Because he, oh, always, sorry, yeah. he, he had a really short run up, and I always he used to take one step back, Signori, and then just lash it. Mm. And then as I got older, I always I always remember being struck by it. And then I thought, actually, the keeper a lot of the time goes in the last couple of strides before you get there. Obviously, changed a bit more now with yeah, the yeah. with the line and and um, the technology now in, stopping them encroaching. Yeah. So I always remember speaking to the keeper saying, actually, if I'm going for the corner, I might as well shorten my run up. Because it gives you less reaction time. Yeah, yeah. You know, most keepers would say, I'm going either a step or a step and a half before you've gone. Yeah. Looking at your body language, your, your angle. So your I used to watch, I used to kind of have the goalkeeper in my peripheral vision. Okay. When I took penalties. So I would, when I was approaching the ball, I was kind of looking over the ball so I could see the outline of the keeper. Okay. And by, by doing that, I could see, like, if he's moving one way or the other. And if he goes early, I could. I could see it and change my mind at the last minute if right. he was going towards my favourite corner. 
So would you have? A, so would you prepare well, for the keeper in terms of like, a, like? No. I don't know. I'm gonna go in, or would you just feel on the? You get the ball in your it hand, was, and you're was, feeling it. It was all feel really. Yeah, like, where I the wind of, is, what the, the wind, state of the so play yeah, that, is. Yeah. That's another thing that I'd. Um, I spoke. Oh, what, oh, oh geez, you have another save. That was the, the human octopus in net, <laughs> as uh, Tim Flowers used to call himself. He used to always call himself the human octopus in the net. Cat. For the, uh, yeah. cat was in goal for me, best goal. Oh yeah, you won't you, you won't uh, you won't strike many better than that, Tis. That's no. some some hit there. And again, and they were the big team at the time. Were they did, did that derail a, a title challenge? No, because we lost that game three two. Oh sorry, <laughs> or oh, it could have derailed it. It was in December. It's mad when you think Blackburn have won a won a title in it. When you when you think now, I know obviously Jack Walker's millions, and and obviously getting Shearer there, who was yeah. the best striker in the country at the time. No. He is one annoying player. Mopai. Mopai. No, didn't see him. He is a proper annoying, whingy little bloke who would get on your nerves. Like a poor dick off type, yeah, isn't yeah. he? Just like a busy little bee. They're not nice for centre arse to play against because they just. I know he's not a kind of netter, but he's a nuisance, isn't he? So did you play with like Ken Moncow and all yeah. that? Yeah. How do you how how do you find him in terms of like player? Just solid. Solid, um, horrible to play against. I would imagine I wouldn't have liked. I, I did play against him when he was at Chelsea. I didn't particularly enjoy playing against. We're him. saying in training and all like you. But would he was he was one of them in training that would stay close away line you and yeah, stay away. Yeah, just keep, how he plays. Yeah, yeah. Franny was like that as well. But we, I, I was like that. You have we have to be like like we had to. You couldn't just turn it on on a Saturday. You had to kind of train yourself into yeah. A frenzy. Obviously, you got better at it as you got older. You know, you learn your rhythm a little bit. But as a young player, when you're trying to make your way, if you haven't got match win and magic in your boots like you have, <laughs> then uh, unfortunately, you've got to scrap for everything you got. What were your What were your boots, Tess? What were your favourite footy boots you wore? Um, I think my favourite ones were the Puma Kings. They were, they were pretty Did they ever weigh you in to wear them? I had three years, I had a good three year contract with them actually. I've goal of the season bonus in it. So that was like 95, 96, 97. And I was only, I was on about, I want to say around that time, I was on about 120 grand a year. That's not a week, that's a year. A year. Um, and you get that a minute now. So, so I was that. I was on that a year, and my Puma contract was about fifty grand a year. It was like a massive portion of my wages. For Would it. you get all free gear and all the sportswear, all your golf t-shirts yeah. and all that? And I had, a, I had a contract with Quasar as well. Do you remember? I was going to say Quasar. Yeah, I thought I remembered you wearing Quasar. Yeah, was so that not a Lineker brand? That was me and Lineker. <laughs> How ironic! <laughs> How times have changed. Eh? <laughs> slightly, slightly changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's what it might have been. He got the better Quasar, and now you're not happy about it. <laughs> Quasar, yeah, I remember that. Were they an English brand, or where were they from? Uh, I don't know, but the boots were made. The the leather on these boots was so thick. Honestly, they were. It's like a little cue on the they side. Were the heaviest boots you've ever. They were like kangaroo skin or something. I always remember. Did you play for Harry Harry Redknapp anywhere? No. But you're obviously known from down Only South Bank, South South. I was playing for him in Harry's Heroes. Oh, Harry's Heroes, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I always remember Harry coming on, and obviously he gets himself involved in loads of things. But this thing he came on was this concave football boot. You'll find it on YouTube, and it's this. It was this boot with this special toe on, but the toe was like a like a like a straight end. And he was saying, oh, it's redesigned to give you these different angles to finish from. And Harry's on there going, yeah, you know, like, honest to God, you'll find a YouTube <laughs> video. And he's trying to sell these boots with the, the, the big flat toe on the end. It's almost like the end of the boots like that, Tis. Yeah. And and you, I'm like, what fucking self-respecting player is going to turn up with them? You imagine turning up in the dressing room with them on, you get fucking slaughtered. Did you, um, did you, you, you must have had some mad cats who you played with because... You played before the watershed where lots of stuff Terry was Erlock. sorted in the dressing rooms, yeah. The airlock, yeah. He was he was 
famous for Rangers. Yeah. People loved them at Glasgow Rangers. Yeah, Teddy yeah. loved them. He was an enforcer. Yeah. I think he was only there a year. But he could he won play. Player of the season. He could play. Yeah. Took him. Yeah. yeah, he could play as well. Yeah, people underrated his his actual ability. But in terms of characters, uh, yeah. So he was a he was a big character in the change room. Uh, Control Chase. the music. In yeah, terms Glenn of Cockrell. Glenn Cockrell. Right. Glenn Cockrell was a big character in the change room. Dowie. Ian Dowie. All right. Yeah. He, had, he, he was Shearer's assistant up there. He's, he's right. a strange fella, Ian Dowie. He's like one of the ugliest people who think they're good looking. You know, you get these people who have this. He's one of them when I'm like, have you not got a fucking mirror in yours? <laughs> but he's having himself absolutely as um, a bit of a ladies' man or, or, or certainly uh, um, a, a lady pleaser. To be fair, he was definitely punching. Was he, yeah? Mrs. Dowie. All right, doing well, yeah. Mrs. Dowie was not well, the one punching in that relationship. Well, as long as he, he had a. Yeah, as long as he had a. a uh, an half decent person he was likely to be punched to be based fair, on the amount of aerial a, collisions he's had he, he was a he was a funny lad in the change room he yeah was just he's a good player i always described him as the, the the person with the most amount of confidence and the least amount of ability all right he, he was he got a low down his career though didn't he, oh, he was yeah, a good yeah. player. i mean i loved playing alongside him where uh, his bollocks because he would work his knackers yeah. off he would take all the hits from the center backs he put his body on the line every game, and I got so many goals because of his little flick-ons and because he barged and sent it back out of the way. You have the little, um, the, the the little knack of just just getting the little nudges and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I did quite enjoy. Because it wasn't just about being an hard case, was it? You had to have the dark arts in there. You yeah. had to know. But it was quite funny when Borley took over. Borley, <laughs> Borley loved players who could play, and Dowie was a trier. Yeah, like his first touch was not not great. That's we used to do the shadow play sometimes, and when we did the shadow play, he used to he used to tell just like a Thursday, he used, Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah, he used to tell Ian while we were doing the shadow play if he could go and do some finishing because he didn't want him to he didn't want the Session moves wrecker. breaking down <laughs> off of him in shadow play. Session wrecker. <laughs> did you you didn't play when was you there with Suey when Ali Day played yeah, in yeah. the game? Okay, that must yeah. have been a fucking tricky, that must have been a strange moment in the dressing room. That that was weird, mate. That was weird. How, how, you can't imagine that happening now. Oh, it wouldn't happen ever again. Couldn't happen ever again. He's just rocked up. Because in those days, like trialists, I don't know if you, I don't know if you had that. Oh my oh, god! Oh shoot! He's got it. Oh. But tri- at Southampton, we used to have trialists coming in all the time. All right. Like well, from lower don't, leagues. Well, and, you, we were talking earlier, saying Cantona came on trial to yeah, Chef Wed Chef when Wed, he was yeah, a France, right, yeah. France international. Yeah. Like, so. There wasn't White Scout and all these global scout no. platforms, YouTube, no. where you can see all these foreign uh, superstars. So, so we think that Ali Dia had pretended to be George Weyer on the phone. He'd done it himself because the, so- the, well, so- the well, story is someone had phoned up on his behalf. Well, nobody really knows. How the fuck's Graham Souness fallen for that? <laughs> like, I, I don't get it. I've spoken to Suey about this because, like, he trained for a few days. Um, the That's lads in training was were he going, that, was it, yeah, was he fucking... Going, What's he doing here? Honestly, I thought he'd won a competition <laughs> to come and train with us. <laughs> I was like, this, this kid's not a footballer. He ain't a footballer. Honestly, and then when we rocked up on the Saturday, and it's like up past one on the Saturday, and he's in the change room, he sat there. And we're looking around going, okay, now that's some competition he won. He's going to get to where the yeah, team's talking and everything. Hell, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Suey comes in, he goes, and uh, the team's such and such, and on the bench... Ali Deer, Graham Potter. Um, Graham Potter, the manager? Yeah, yeah, he was there then. Yeah. So uh, we were all like, what, what's going on here? And then we had an injury half an hour in, and he puts him off. And he runs around like a headless chicken. Subs him off. Ends up coming off. But the worst <laughs> bit about it all, <laughs> I mean, he's probably the worst player ever to play in the Premier League. Probably. There's been some bad I mean, there has been yeah, some bad ones, but he's up there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and the most embarrassing bit about it is that I was the one that came off and he came on as a sub for me. So you didn't actually play with him? No, I didn't play with him. Oh, so that's all right then. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's all right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's some come down in here from fucking Matt Latiss to Ali Day. It's going to be the biggest drop in quality ever. Then again, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's just insane to think that... It's quite funny like, how the fuck he's played in the Premier League. How has he got through? How did he get an appearance? And, and he, he clearly hasn't been able to 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 fucking play. I think he went I mean, and play. He went and play for Gateshead, I think. All right. After. So 
But you do, like, like I, I've been a manager, you do get some mad phone calls from like mad countries oh, where they go, I've got this player for you there. And you're like, yeah, you scored 14 goals in in two games in our, in, in our league. And you're like, go on, send them over then because we've got fucking nothing to lose here. <laughs> um, and then they turn up and obviously they're, they're way below the um, the threshold. I remember at, at Southampton, I think it was, this was Siri as well, actually. Yeah, what's Siri's season? How, how had, the fucking had... hell is he that fast? He's getting faster, can oh, He's unbelievable, isn't he? Maybe that's the, how you get quicker. Just, just. He must be taking some serious stuff. <laughs> well, he is, because he fucking gets people pregnant without going anywhere near them. Wait. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> I don't think allegedly gets you out of the shit that much. Uh, not as much as I think it does, anyway. But that was a mad one, wasn't it? And then I, I, I never like when people fuck up, and I've done it lots of times, Matt, as you, as you probably know. Well, I've, read, I've read all about it, when, mate. When you do a video, like a hostage video, and you're crying, and you're like... Why can't you just come out, Kyle, and say, listen, I've fucking been up to no good. And, you, know, you, you mug yourself off. And, yeah. you know, you do an interview for a newspaper and you start putting the tiny tears on. No one gives a bollocks. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so that's what... the thing. Anyone will buy any old shit now, so they'll just roll, they'll roll it out and go, they'll accept this. He, he's yeah. massive, Rodri. Would love to have him. Any team, I think, would benefit Absolutely. from having a Rodri in the team. Yeah. I remember at, at, when Sui was manager, we had two Norwegian centre forwards came on trial with us. Egelost and Stad. Yeah, he was one of them. So at the end of the week, I'm trying to think of the other one. At the end of the week, we could only buy one of them <laughs> because that's all we had enough money for. So we had to choose between Egelost and Stad, who we did choose. Guess who the other one was that we didn't we didn't take? Not Zlatan Ibrahimovic or something. No. I think who. Another Norwegian. Norwegian. Um, centre forward. Yeah. Okay, now, Tor Andre Flo. Was it Flo, yeah? He was a strange one because he caught fire and then went out like a light, didn't he, up yeah. at Rangers? Yeah. It, it's, it's easily done that, you know. Fucking tr- it's tough up there. Yeah, some. Do you never fancy that, Matt? Sounds like a Rangers? Not really. I don't know. Never, never really fancy playing abroad? Playing in another country, no. no. Didn't really appeal to me at all. I had a few French clubs made some inquiries because I think they looked at my name and thought that I was one of them. Would you have spoken any French in Guernsey? Would you? S- uh, I could speak French from what I learned at school. All right, same um, as me. So then. I could I could get by on all of that. Yeah, I mean I think my French accent was a bit better <laughs> than yours. <laughs> uh, less said about that, the better it is. Uh, <laughs> But that's the thing. Like, I, mean, I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but you did. <laughs> that's the thing. After that happened, I thought, you, when you've made the cunt yourself, you just got to have a laugh, haven't you? Yeah, like, you know, especially when you've been... Um, you're a meme and it's going all around the world. I think you've got to be able to... Yeah, I think in life you've got to be able to take the piss out of yourself. I think that's where we've gone yourself, wrong. And that's where the whole planet has gone wrong. Well, you Nobody can, you can take can't a laugh joke anymore. anymore. Yeah? Everyone gets offended so easily. It's just... Oh, it drives me mad. Man for man marking, zonal marking. Wow, everyone's in the six yard box, look at that. Brentford are a set piece team and need to play for them. Me better than that. Was you corner taker, Tis? Yeah. In Scored swingers, out swingers? Scored from a corner. My only goal for Marseille was from a corner against Andre Ter Stegen. Was it? He was playing for Munch and Gladbach at the time. Yeah. And, and it wasn't a great corner. But we had been working everything. on, because he's not great from crosses, putting it under the bar and working on him, and he missed everything. It wasn't... We used to have a kid in our team who shot from corners, left-footed kid, and it was, it was like having a free kick. He was that accurate. I used to do it at school a lot when I was, I would imagine when I was your at school. Wand, I used yeah. to score from Just, corners Especially if it's on the wind. Yeah. Did you score Premier League corner, corner from Premier League? Yeah. Against? Well, I had... Um, one against Sheffield United, uh, and I had. Was that, who's that? Simon two, Tr- Tracy uh, was that? What was his name? Simon yeah. Tracy, that keeper. Uh, yeah, I think it might have been. Yeah, you know, I'm just thinking of the sticker book. That's a like. I had another one against Wimbledon that went sh- that I took, and it went in, and it, Robbie Earl got a slight touch Robbie on Robbie Earl. I tell you what, he nicked a load of goals from midfield. But Robbie Earl. It was. Obviously, it went down as his own goal as opposed to giving it to me, even though it was on target. 
because he had a nick on it, they put it down as an own goal and took oh, it off so me. like, yeah, someone scored one last night and he nicked it and it got took off of me, was that? Don't Calvert-Lewin, Jack Harrison or something, oh, was yeah, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, not yeah. last night, the night before. Yeah, you got you got the dubious goals panel now, haven't you? Yeah. You'd have scored... You'd have, it'd been even easier for you to score a pen with the current VAR rules because the cat can't go. Yeah. He's fucking planted to his... So that's a good claim to fame. If Sheen is at your club and you end up on pens, they can't get pens off you. That record, though, you did that with me. And Crossley's the only one, your only blemish. Yeah. In fact, a anything change on the run up, or did you, is there anything you done differently in that? Uh, or just a good save? He just. Oh, what a ball. He just timed his. He timed his little dummy just right. right. So he. he went to go towards my favourite corner and he timed it just as I was about to strike it and I saw him move so I went the other way thinking that he was going that way and he, and he just went he went like that a little bit and then flung himself that way I just scored and one past him before just right, yeah. I just scored past him before so do you think he's done his own work on you? Uh, he might have done he may have done or he uh, just got lucky on the day well, did I, was it after, hang on I took five against him in my career, so I'm four one up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think. Actually, that might have been the. What was he doing? Goal. Oh, that might have been the first one I took against him. Actually, that's the other one. No, what's with the, no, what's with the, the top Brazilian keepers? That's Allison had a tricky time at the Emirates last night, and obviously Edison's not not been his normal self here. Mm. Every pass De Bruyne makes is the right weight, the right angle. Very, very rarely see him make a mistake, do you? Yeah. For me, Matt, he's he's the 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 best all round player in in our league. Um, Can't as a midfielder, with that. I love watching him. But yeah. Can't disagree with that. He's got everything. And it, it's amazing to think he never made it at Chelsea. I oh, know it's mental. Isn't it? You had to go to Wolfsburg. You had to go out to that league and develop to become. I know Jose Mourinho has done everything in the game, but De Bruyne and Mo Salah, yeah. he let go at Chelsea. Yeah. But again, he's, he, he, you can see how it happens because he wants players at the other end, doesn't he? He wants them yeah. when they're men, when they're what, 24, 26, 28, 30. Yeah. He doesn't, you know, to be fair to Pep, I was a bit worried about what he was doing with Foden at first, but. Uh, look at Foden now. Oh. Um, you know, I think he's as as talented as a technician as we've produced. The way he moves, oh, the way he moves, yeah. the way he glides, he? like he's just lovely to watch. To think there was a time when we never thought we'd produce players like that. And uh, as hard as we we are on the academy and all the stuff that comes into footy, we have to accept that some mega talented kids have come out of the academy system. Yeah, who do you, who's the, the modern day players you you like watching? Tis, who would you pay to watch? Um, De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva. Um, I love watching. I used to love watching David Silva as well. Oh yeah, he was a mega player. What a yeah. footballer! Yeah. yeah, what a footballer! Um, I think I like I like anybody who can do things that kind of change the course of a game but if they can do that without being you know 100 mile an hour footballer so I, I would have a lot more uh, no one's on beaten the human cat of, got, uh, human octopus yeah. this afternoon uh, this evening I have a lot more respect for players that can have a massive influence on football matches when they're not very quick because they have to do so bear camp, you'd little, like a bear yeah, camp, a yeah. camp and a Zola, Zola, those players, Cantona, yeah. you know, they were they were all players. They move at their own pace. The, it's I'll tell you who's the other one, who I loved watching play football because when the ball came to him, you might you might know who I'm talking about it. But when the ball came to him, the whole game seemed to just stop and and come down to his pace. And it was Dimitar Berbatov. Okay, yeah, yeah. What a footballer! His yeah. first touch was just unbelievable. 
and it just thought when when the ball came to him, it's like all the other players went into slow motion and just went, oh, I'll play this at the same pace as he's playing it. Yeah, he, he didn't just, he didn't change for anyone, did he? No. The, no there's so, the, there's players that come along that have that, that have that ability. I always think of um, and you'll remember this a bit more. Berbatov being Bulgarian, obviously Stoichkov before him, and, yeah. and obviously um, if you remember that '94 World Cup, you had Lechkov. The Bulgarians did well. The Romanians did well, which was Hadji, Georgi Hadji. Yeah. Who I loved Dan watching. Grow, yeah, up well, uh, played with him. Florin Radachoyu, uh, Georgi Popescu, Dimitrescu who came to Tottenham. Remember him, Ily Dimitrescu, yeah, yeah. the winger. And but the standout, the big, the big player in that team was the number ten, which was Hadji. Hadji. Yeah. Um, obviously, left footed rather than obviously right footed, but we might like you know if I, if I think of your type of player, that you know genius that could lead a team and lift the team and win a game or score a goal from nothing yeah. or and he was another one who kind of did he go to Spain? He went to Barca, didn't it? Didn't Barca quite happen really, yeah. for him. And then he found his. Club at Galatasaray. Yeah. Weirdly, which you, you know, I think they went to. Did they get to a Europa final and do really well? Played Arsenal, I think, in, in one. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, and I remember that. I remember watching them growing up because I remember uh, Palmer were in one with Cannavaro and Buffon and Turam and uh, Fuser and. Yeah. Um, when I think about that Yugoslavian side, we talked earlier on about the war and Prishnecki. Then you obviously had the Croats come out of that in Euro 96 when Davor Suha scores Funny against... Funny enough, when I was in Hong Kong a couple of weeks ago playing an exhibition match, Davor Suha was our manager. Yeah. Well, I, I met him for the first time. Oh, so he's he, in. oh, there you go. Foden. What a time to score as well. Th yeah. This one I think he's got to add to his game, Foden, which he has this year. And I don't know whether that's obviously the... the, the, the players clearing out and now he's getting more... You spoke earlier on on the on the podcast about getting minutes and dipped in and out in yeah, the first yeah. part of your career while you, you know, look at Philly slight. He's not now. He's, he's turned into a man now. Yeah. That's and I think poor defensive header. Of all the players that are at Man City, for me, he's the most important because he's the academy kid. Yes. Jim Cassell was our academy manager. We had I think twenty six internationals come out of our academy. But Jim, who's left City now, who's the academy director, signed Foden at nine or ten, I think. I think he's been there, so he's right. the last that I can remember of of that kind of era. And twenty six internationals, something like that. Yeah, yeah. We had, we had a few Irish and Scottish, and yeah. Um, obviously, Sean Wright was Sean was the kind of first one through the door and obviously we got a few quid off Chelsea for him and then you had uh, obviously Mickey Richards, Sturridge, myself, Stevie Ireland, Glenn Whelan. Um, but, but, and I also don't know how to be in the right place at the right time. That's a great knock. Oh, what a machine. <sighs> See the pace there. Yeah, that'll just stop it. That was the thing, I, I seen uh, you had Michael Anthony interview you as well. Interesting guy. He, the Irish uh, Michael Anthony show. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting guy. Yeah. And he had he had Jesse March on. So when I was listening to it, and Jesse obviously had Erling at Leipzig, uh, Salzburg. Yeah. And he was talking about him, and he said, "What strikes you?" And he said, "His athleticism. Yeah. How, you know, he's a free, which you've just seen there. Yeah. The boy is. It, it was at Wolves last year. Collins is no slouch, but you know that that's a thoroughbred. Uh, Guineas winning racehorse yeah. running across the near post there. Um, yeah. um, Mike has another one. He was he was in our academy. Came through. Go on. Do you want to lower that down? Have you got that? It's about for you lads on obviously on VAR. The most obvious question: What do you think on VAR should stay implemented? Maybe the comparisons, obviously, to VAR. So, do we think VAR is a good or a bad thing for yeah. the game? Um, so, I... When it first was mooted, the idea was first mooted, I was really pro-VAR. Because I thought, right, this is, this is a chance where the, the little teams, who never get the decisions at the big clubs things might be a bit fairer. Yeah. And I thought this system, brilliant. 
this could be a real game changer and it, and it could level things up a little bit because the amount of times I w went to places like Arsenal and Old Man Trafford, United, yeah. Liverpool and never got given a penalty for some blatant, blatant penalties and you never got the decisions at the, the big club and then you just got to breathe on one of their players and it's a penalty. Yeah. So I thought, well, this is good. This is gonna this is gonna make things change a little bit, and uh, and I was really pro. And then I started watching it, and then it, these decisions started being made. And I'm thinking, what I didn't take into consideration was that the the same idiots that were making the decisions on the pitch are the same group of referees that are sat watching the videos making the same decisions <laughs> again. Uh, now, two things that I think should have happened to make VAR better. Firstly, I think there should be an ex-player in the room with them to advise, not to make the decisions. I've, I've said but that, but then advise. they say, what about the bias? I'm like, well, everyone's got a bias if you want to be like that. Every referee, I mean, every you, human you, you has don't, bias. Obviously, you wouldn't have a player in there who has played at any of the two teams that are involved. Yeah. You know, you can have a pool of What's what they do with players. the punditry now as well? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, so... So that was the first thing, just to give a bit of context in certain situations where the referees don't always see what's going on. The dark arts. The dark arts, exactly. And then the second thing for me is that I think there should be a separate group of referees that just does VAR and do not officiate on the pitch. Yeah. Because if you're doing both jobs from the same pool of referees, you've got VAR in the room who has got his mate out on the pitch, who he doesn't want to embarrass, mm. doesn't want to make look like an idiot. Yeah. And so he's compromised. Well, we've heard that with some of the feedback loops. Mike, Mike yeah. Dean has, has said it. He's, yeah. he's, he's openly admitted it. So there's, you need to take away that opportunity for that person who's compromised by being the bloke's mate who's out on the pitch. You need a separate group of referees. I would say even like the retired referees, you're only sat in the room. Yeah, you don't you know need to mean? be physically fit. Use, yeah. the, use the retired decent referees and leave the referees yeah. on the pitch just to do that job. Yeah, and it allows you to utilise their expertise because they'll know all the players. They'll know yeah. what players, you know, referees know which players are more likely to dive than not having officiated against them for the, for the period. And, you know, the fact that they can't do the physical distance, good idea in so terms I, of using I, their expertise to, yeah, to referee absolutely. games. So I think in... in So the goal line technology we have to accept is a bona fide, it works, keep it. The goal line technology, it is it a goal, the, is it, it not a goal? most of the time. All right. Well, hang on a minute. Would you have had more or less goals with the technology, do you reckon? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were a big bar and down, big bar and in, man. Um, I, I, I mean, I think it's the, the goal line technology is... Good enough, and yes, occasionally. It, well, it's objective, it, it isn't it? It's a goal, it it's not, work. it's over the line, it's not. Yeah. We might get the odd I mean, fault. It, it didn't, didn't work at Aston Villa. No, Chef United, goal, it cost them, cost didn't them it? Yeah. Relegation. So, but, but I'm saying, on the whole, it's like 99%. Exactly. It's a, it's yeah. a massive percentage yeah. that it works properly. So, yeah, I don't think you can. I mean, I'm not for slowing replays down and because every bit of contact ah, that was the other thing on VAR. doesn't look good. That was the other thing on VAR. When they did, when it first came out, I'm pretty sure. They said that if the referee went to the side to look at the incident for like a red card yeah. for a tackle, they would only show it to him in full speed. Because yeah. when you slow things down, everything looks so much worse. Yeah. But they haven't. They've start they when a referee goes over it, they're showing it to him yeah. in Multiple slow motion. Angles, yeah. And they, they shouldn't do that. See, where I, where I struggle with this was, was like this. If you and if you've done analysis, and as I say, I've, I've, I do a lot in terms of when we're preparing for games. Sometimes when you're watching stuff and you're looking at decisions that have been given in your game on a computer, a fraction of a second just before, you still don't know whether it's left someone's foot or not, and the player can be offside or not. And there is some really, really tight calls where, yeah. you know, it, it depends on which frame you've taken. And, yeah. and then, as we know, with elite... Um, well, I, I think what what they're saying is in that situation they're they're trying to get the same frame every time. So if they're wrong, at least they're being consistent. Yeah. So, but yeah. but I get what you're saying because there is that that it is split seconds at times. And, and then they've gone off now people's shoulder, so they're saying, okay, you know, this is the goal scoring part of the body. Um, for me, the problem you've got is, you know. I always struggle with, and this is the main thing about VAR. Firstly, I think if you're paying 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 quid or whatever 
extortion amount they're currently charging you for the ticket and there's a contentious decision in the stadium and then it comes back and it says goal no goal and you don't know you in the stadium know. Yeah, like rugby be. league rugby union cricket everyone should on. be aware there should be better communication for sure next question one just directly for you Joe. I just see this goal Tony just uses body ah he's got to be stronger for me yeah that's route one isn't it proper route one it's clever by Tony I'm struggling with his hat on. I'm just don't know why he's got a Ricky on indoors. A lot of questions are coming in. Why has he got a hat on indoors? Like, what? Why? Why do you need a hat on? Don't get it. Sorry. Go on. Next questions. Uh, well, a lot. It's to do with to do with Antonio Gear, but no, that is suspect. That's for sure. But me, I don't think I don't think I'm a fashion guru. No, and, and from what I've seen of of Tis, I don't think he's next uh, Balencia or Prada model. It might Definitely be for a uh, Titleist or Taylor Made, but. A question from someone who lives in Bristol. What did you think of the city when you lived there? Bristol? Yeah. Uh, really cool. Love Bristol. I think it's a fantastic city, obviously. Um, loads of young students, but also um, really a fantastic art scene and bank scene and all the music scenes. Cool and top places for food as well. One for you, Tess. Uh, could, uh, did Collymore reach his full potential or could he have been England's star striker? No, he didn't reach his full potential. Mm. I think there were times when I played against Stan that when he was on his day, he was unplayable. Mm. He had all the attributes he needed to be a, a top international footballer. Pretty sure um, record, wasn't he? Eight and a half mil to Liverpool? Yeah. Pretty transfer record? Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I think with the ability that he had, he could have got more out of it. Who, who, who did he break? Who was the transfer record that he broke? Ooh. That's a good question. Eight and a half, so is it before him? Someone went for seven and a half, was it before him? Another striker. You'll have played with him. Uh, 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 Alan? No. No? Was it not uh, Andy Cole? Did Andy Cole not go? And Kevin Keegan was on the steps. Sheila was 15 mil, wasn't he? Yeah, it was. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, that would have been I'm that. sure Andy so, yeah, Cole Andy broke Cole. it to Man United, and then Collymore come to Liverpool the next um, the next summer. Mm. Um, what else have you got? Any other questions for us? I'm hoping I know. Gets the Madrid's in here. Tis looks like he's Malibu's here, running a bit dry there, <laughs> spitting feathers here. I'll, I'll swap the camera. I've got to swap the camera. Two last questions. We're going to speak to Fort on Luton this year, in particular Ross Barkley, his new role, and then uh, Honours Fort on Southgate as the man for England going into the summer. Uh, I, I thought Luton, if they'd have won that Newcastle game, um, this is still a little swig that, if they'd have won that Newcastle game at the weekend, I thought, with, with the back of the Brighton results, I thought, you know, coming into the new year, for the team that's chasing survival, a couple of wins early, set set yeah. these down. I, I mean, I've been so impressed with Luton at the start. I gave him no chance at the start of the season, like most people. Um, you know, that first half a dozen games, they were really up against yeah. it. Uh, but what they've done since. No, I just knocked that been, sound been, down for us, please, mate. Been really impressed with them. Um, well, you know, given that uh, I'm assuming their budget is probably the yeah, the lowest in the Premier League yeah. by some distance, you know. Um, Mick Arthur behind the scenes they're, they're, there, done a great job, Mick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great lad, Mick, as well. Wouldn't really want to play man, against yeah. him, but nice bloke. Wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to meet him in the dark, Alan. Is he a big golfer? He likes his golf, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, what I'm, you spoke about impressed. earlier though about the ground being a factor. Yes, must be worth a couple of points to them. Kennel is it still called Definitely. Kennelworth yeah, it Road? Is still is it still Kennelworth Road? Yeah, it's, it's one of the worth. most peculiar football stadiums, isn't it? Very it, odd. It's like a, a odd. passageway in between two terraced houses, yeah. and it's a turn style. Like the fans are on top of you there. Yeah, and I can imagine. I scored there when it was a plastic pitch. That's oh, how God. old I am. <laughs> Oh God! I I, I still uh, my youth team coach Cheers, is Frankie Bunn, who's got I think still got the record for S yeah did six, six league goals, goals in the league, in the league cup. cup yeah and uh, Bunny was Oldham which were AstroTurf and his knees and his hips he just said the AstroTurf just he said just just unrelenting I had one of the funniest incidents is at Boundary Park I think would you like playing on Astro there. with the way you played it would have been no. a life no no I hated it hard bounces I hated it the pitches were horrible it was hard. 
It was too bouncy. It was just ball ran away. But if you're not a big you. runner, it wouldn't you wouldn't be a pounder on it in terms of you know you're not pounding oh, not the term, ground it, on it. Just in terms of the way that the the grass burns, uh, astro turf burns and all that. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. It was horrible. See, skill, flair players tend to do well with the close control on Astro because it's obviously a lot easier to manipulate. Like the futsal yeah, and all that. Yeah, but those Astro pitches, you didn't play on those Astro pitches. Oh, no, it was just green, green like, fluff on the yeah, top of concrete. When, yeah, it wasn't it was, like 3G or 5G or something. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. was first generation. Yeah, you couldn't get a stud in. I remember yeah. like the, if the keeper booted it, it out from, from his hands, if the defender let it bounce, honestly, the bounce would be... Yeah, like a a skyscraper. Yes, yeah, so it's just high. green concrete then, isn't it? It was yeah. just concrete. Yeah. It, it literally was green concrete. So yeah, it was horrible. But I remember playing at. I don't. Know, Frankie might have actually been playing. Or was he? Might have been. And so we Ricky played Oldham Oliver. in the quarter final of the League Cup. I think it was the year they got to the final. Yeah, the League Cup final. They Dennis got to the League Cup final. Yeah, there. so we yeah. played them in the quarter final. We played the home game against them. Uh, drew two all. And I'll never forget Roger Milford. Do you remember Roger Milford, yeah, referee? Name, yeah. He played seven minutes injury time. Now, that was Just unheard before of in 1992 <laughs> or three, I think. So he played seven... No, 1990 it was. Played seven minutes injury time and they equalised in the 97th minute. Otherwise, we were in the semi-final. So we get a replay. We've got to go up to the plastic pitch. So we're 1-0 down. The ball gets flashed. I, I'll tell you this story because it's an Evertonian. Uh, ball gets flashed across the box and our centre forward doesn't go for it, right? Chris Nickel was our manager. Who's uh, your centre forward then? Paul Rideout. All oh, right. So we <laughs> come in after the game. Like, we end up getting beat 2-0. That was a big chance at 1-0 to get us back in the game. Chris Nickel's steaming. He goes, he's, he's at Rideout. He's going, why have you not... Why have you not gone for that ball across the across the six yard box? Why have you not flung yourself at it? Do you know what Paul Rideout said? <laughs> Paul Rideout went, "I ain't diving on that stuff." <laughs> we all look, we're all the table going, "What? Semi final of the cup on the line here, and you're not going to throw yourself at a header because there's plastic pitch." He's getting an uh, astral Because in case he gets a grass burn, he was a good looking fellow though, Rideout. He, he was he, good he, 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 he come to Everton from. He'd, he'd, he'd been in like the wilderness did he go like to like the far east or something did he pop out in a few mad places yeah, and then he, he popped, done actually, he popped yeah. back up at Everton it was kind of like we were desperate for a strike and, and if you'd ever remember when Everton Where won the cup in 95 did he um, go to Rangers or was it after Everton he went to Rangers oh I think it might have been I think it might have been after Everton he, he, Everton had Mike Walker had done well at Norwich so Everton had given him the job and it was a disaster. And um, just check that for I'm us. I'm going to Google him. Oh, yeah, no, I'll check for you. And then um, on, Joe Royal took over to keep Everton up, and Everton ended up going on a bit of a decent run in the league and obviously got on a cup run and, and ended up winning the cup. Yeah. And obviously he brought he brought Ride out back because obviously Joe will have liked the big nine with a presence. And at the time, I think Everton had that big dunk who was missing a lot of games with injury. Yeah, I'm a catch you. They bought off the back of the '94 World Cup, and he hadn't quite uh, got the, Knox got County. The message. Was that what it was? He went to Swindon from us, so that's where he started on loan. Then he went to Knox County, then he went to Rangers, and then he came to Everton, All right. and then he went out to China. I think oh, that's, that that's where I've got confused. Then I thought we'd got him from like China, but that's where they must have sold him to. He ended up playing for Tranmere. Yeah. No changes. And I think he, I think he scored a hat trick against us in a league game, a league cup game for Tranmere. For Tranmere against us, we were three 0 up at half time and lost four three. FA Cup game two thousand and one, I think Fucking that was. Hell. Very rare that happens. What happened to me? I got sent off at Spurs and we we come back and won four three. I got sent off. I give the foul away on the edge of the box. Christian Ziga bent it in, and I was arguing with Rob Styles about the free kick, and he sent me off for aggressively walking towards him at half time. And we come back and won 4-3. John Macken. Did you take the credit for it? No, I never got fined. I was buzzing because I was like, Keegan's going to do me two weeks' wages here. <laughs> and every goal that went in, I was like, right, that's only a week now. And then I was like, right, 3-3, free, free. I might get fined here. 4-3, I was like, you'll definitely forget. <laughs> I was only a youngster at the time, so every pay packet was uh, yeah. w was important. 
Um, no changes. Just shows you, like, look how deep they are there, it's that 5 3 2 low block, Brentford. Yeah. No intention of pressing them, waiting to pick them off on the counter. But clear identity, know what they're trying to do. And you've got to you've got to have a clear identity against City because if you go in without without a game plan, wanting to just go toe to toe with them, you, you can't believe a club of Brentford size are doing as well as they're doing. But it just shows you if no matter how many fans you get in your stadium, if you don't get your culture right and you don't get your academy right and you don't get your and you got you got a good manager. Yeah, I like the manager. I like Thomas Frank. I think he's done a cracking job from there. He's got. He's another one promote. Was he promoted from within their structure? I though? think he was. Yeah. So obviously Mark Warburton and, and a few have come through. Uh, Brentford, Southampton have been a bit of a feeder club. This like with Pochettino and Cooman. with players, Cooman, yeah. But obviously with players as well. When I think of all the you know Lovren and all the players, oh Liverpool God, have they... taken off Southampton. I think, Never mind. I Bale, think Liverpool, Walcott, Liverpool, over the last ten years, have given Southampton in transfer fees just about what the entire club is worth as a whole. Right. So I think they've given us like nearly so you had two hundred million. Lallana, you paid a few. They paid a few quid for Mane. They paid a few quid for. Yeah. Ricky had, Lambert, I know they bought, but he wasn't that expensive, was he? No, but Klein, they paid a few Klein, quid for yeah, Van Dijk. Not Van Dyke, my God, I forgot about Van Dyke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who else was there? Klein, Van Dyke, Lovren, uh, Lana, Lambert, Mane. I'm sure there was one more. Have I missed one out. Never took. Redmond did well for years. No one paid a, f a few quid for him, did they? I'm trying to think. Um, Walcott went to Arsenal. He's lost Walcott. Bale went to Spurs. Uh, Schneidlin. Schneidlin, Man United. Uh, Wanyama went to Ross Spurs. Lavia this year to Chelsea. Yeah. Wanyama to I mean, Spurs, yeah. Seriously, look at that. I'm not <coughs> being funny. Did you see that? What Tony did there? You just, you, you just give referee, it to the referees. As a referee, just give it, yeah. he must surely look back at that after the game and go, God, what a mug I was to have fell for that. But you know, I think every time the ball goes near the sideline, it's almost like the game's refereed differently towards the touchline yeah. than it is towards the penalty area. It's mad. I mean, you could just tell from the way that Tony fell over there that he wasn't fouled. You just don't fall over like that. Look at this look Walker. Look at Walker go. Oh, my God, look at that pace. Wow. <laughs> he was running that fast. He couldn't stop before the, <laughs> before the touch line. Did you see that? He's just taking his place in row A. Need a sandpit at the back of the stand there. <laughs> Slow him down. Seriously, don't oh, play. What he's a good player, Diaz, isn't he? Ruben yeah. Diaz. He's changed. I, I thought his, his his acquisition changed a huge part of their defensive culture since since he's came in. Yeah. You see them celebrate blocks and you they celebrate uh, good defending. Yeah. And then obviously you've got a, a centre half in midfield in Rodrigo in terms of size, but with obviously first receiver Sergio Busquets like quality. Yeah, I mean. Very rare he gives the ball away and or miscontrols it. So, so you know, we, we have to accept this, or, or certainly, you know, we, we have to um, give Pep the credit for the way he's changed the game as we see it on these shores. Yeah. But do we have to take into account the amount of money spent on the best of the best? Oh, of course. It's a, it's a lot easier to win a trophy and play great football when you you've got the biggest budget. And you can buy the best players on the planet. Oh, hello. Oh, he's on here. He's on. Hello. He's on. Ah, he's, uh, them lads coming out have played him on. Cut back. Cut back. No. If you're Ivan Tony, just stay at Brentford forever? Good question. Um, depends what he wants from his career. Does he want to be the richest he can possibly be at the end of it? Uh, does he want to win medals being a bit part player in a squ squad? Because I think if he goes to one of the big boys, I don't think he, he's don't, first choice. You don't choice. think he starts for an Arsenal? Gabriel Jesus? Um, 
I don't think so. And I think he also kind of owes Brentford. Given sticking what's, with him. Given what's happened. Wait. Sticking with him. Um, I don't know. I, I think he just kind of suits Brentford. I'm not sure. He's a good player. I'm just thinking, if you wrong. want to score goals, though, and you're a centre-forward, you don't want to be fucking there. Be I know it's Man City, and I know Brentford do change from game to game. Yeah, opponent, they do, but yeah. They do play a lot of games, certainly away from home in, in, in this kind of system. Yeah, that would but frustrate then does you a little them? bit. Yeah. You know, you're not doing much running there, I are don't, you? I don't know if he's good enough to be Arsenal's centre-forward for an entire season. And What and about Spurs' centre-forward? Um, Newcastle centre forward. I'm trying to think who gets in the top four other yeah. than Liverpool and, and obviously um, could he play as a centre forward for Chelsea instead of you know I'm not saying they're going to get in the top four but I don't I mean don't get me wrong I think he's a good footballer yeah is he going to be a regular centre forward for a team that's going for Champions League football he's got better as every incremental step's gone though so yeah you know, yeah, that's true until he, that's until true. he gets until a chance you're... we wouldn't know would yeah. we yeah no, that's a good point and I look at lads who've played in Champions League sides and I go do you know what I've seen Divock O'Reilly score against Barcelona and yeah, I would have true. to say he's, he's a little bit of a better type than him but then I just think the only team I could see taking him is Arsenal I think if you're Arsenal though yeah, but they've, they've signed two keepers. They don't fucking need two. They... Oh, oh, Foden. Oh, it's the ball, though, isn't it? Yeah. The main man has, has just fucking found the answer, hasn't he? De Bruyne. I have got Foden in my fantasies, you know. I didn't make him captain, though. Haaland, just his mere presence, yeah. buys other people. Space in the box because the, the defenders are just obsessed. Where's he? Where's the big fella? Yeah. Especially when De Bruyne gets his head up and gets half a yard. But do you think this is their strongest team? I'm trying to think, does John Stones get back in? John Stones doesn't play Ed Rodri in midfield. No. Oh, look at that. That's a ball. It's <laughs> a great a ball, finish. A you know, header. the cat's there again, to be fair to him. If it's not in the corner, I think. That... Yeah. But it's just that, isn't it? It's the weight, it's the the angle. Um, it just makes it look so easy. Makes it look so easy. That's a good header, by the way. Yeah. The cat's there. Yeah. He'll be disappointed, I think, the keeper. He hasn't kept that out. Usually, if they get one hand on it, they... I'm just trying to think. Maybe only Aki. You go on it. Could it be John Stones for that? But I think I think the left footer at left centre half. I think. Um... De Bruyne had photos of Letizia upon his wall when he was... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if Javi did, then obviously De Bruyne has... <laughs> um, that was an interesting one that the, the, uh, they asked in before on socials about Southgate in England. Where, oh, what, yeah. what do you think of the, the situation there? Uh, I think we've done the bare minimum of what we should have done. In terms of losing that Euros was a big chance at Wembley to, we to win a final. Two massive chances. I think the semi-final of the World Cup and the, Croatia the final game. of the Euros. And we we were in the lead, weren't we, with Trippier's goal? I think both of those games we could have pressed on and not almost sat back at the one-goal lead. So I we haven't really kind of done anything spectacular to get to where we've got to. Do. I mean, we beat Germany. We albeit were, we when, really... I know, I know that, but albeit when we got to the final and the semis... You know, under Robson, in terms of the semis, the, it was seen as a massive achievement. You know, the the Italian ninety. You know, England getting to the latter stages of a competition hasn't always been the norm. And I don't think, if I'm honest, yes, I'm not looking at them going. They should win a tournament. I don't see them as that good. I don't think. I don't think. I, I think, think we've got a, a little enough bit. ability. Yeah, I think we struggled. Perhaps, I think the first eleven is good. Um, and there's a lot of talent there that can win any See, I can't matches. have the cat me. I'm struggling with the cat. I just think he, I, I just think he's a keeper that likes making saves. And I think if you want to win a big tournament, I think 
You want one who doesn't like making saves. I think if it comes to a penalty shootout, you'd always fancy him because he can always, you know, he's, he's, he's a flamboyant save maker. But I just look over the, the, the tournament and I go, I just, I don't know. I just, I just worry about, I always think the great sides tend to have a really solid spine. Yeah. And I look through England's spine, whether that was Maguire, Pickford, I, yeah, Stones, the, the even the midfield situation. lads, I, you know, Kane may be a little bit different, but at that point he hadn't gone to Bayern and he hadn't, kind of flown the nest oh. and Southgate I think he's done an admirable job and as you say there maybe level par I think I think level par for what for the teams that we've beaten along the way and the positions we've gotten ourselves into I think we've done the bare minimum well that'll be success for them because obviously I think the England group it's not playing a massive the... part of it well I would imagine the England group would want to there's a part of them that would want to get back from a major tournament and not be vilified and not yeah. have to do a fucking advert with a pizza fucking thing over your head or yeah or you know all the papers being after you and effigies being burned to you so winning a tournament's great if you can but also second prize is not being publicly humiliated yeah, yeah that's true that's why I wanted to ask you on, on the podcast we were saying about the clicks in the England camp um and you look at lots of talented players being together, but as we know in a team sport, it's you've all got to fit. And does the Man United Liverpool North South divide and the fucking egos almost cost you? Yeah. Progressing in a in, in major tournaments, as we've seen Greece win Euros on solid teams with Yeah, Denmark. Denmark. Well they took Who advantage didn't even of the qualify. Well they took advantage of the your Yugoslavian conflict. Exactly. Uh, they got in off it. Um, and what, I think Nick Pope I like Pope but Pope doesn't kick it as far as Pickford and I, I mean you know I, I don't um, I don't see a standout candidate I, I like Pope because I just think he's bigger and he keeps more shots out the net and when I watch Pickford I just think he's got really hard hands so he wants to tip everything over the bar and used to call them kind of camera saves yeah. and push everything out in big saves. It's like when he injures Van Dijk, he shouldn't really be there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just don't think he has this calmness. Now, for Everton, and kicking it miles every time it goes back to him and up to Carvalhoon, it works. But I think for England, they're like... Pickford most clean sheets this season, though. Yeah, look, I, th I think Everton... Have... Is that right? Down to yeah, I think Evans, yeah, Evans way of playing. Wow. They don't take many risks on the back. You know, watch them again at the weekend. It goes back for Pickford, and he's literally kicking it. Launching and he's got it. people forget how far Jordan kicks it. I mean, I remember playing for Burnley um, against Preston when he was on loan there, and he kicks it into your box like, which is a massive weapon in the right team. If you're England and you want to keep possession and play out from the back, Nick Pope and Pickford probably aren't your best two components. That Pickford yeah. probably ahead of him on that. Ramsdale's probably your best keeper. Um, and he can't get a game. Well, because Reyes, obviously. Um, but don't forget City done that. Don't forget he, he bought Bravo from Barcelona, Claudio Bravo, the Chilean keeper first, and got rid of Joe Hart, and it never worked. And then yeah. he dipped back in another 60 mil for Edison and solved the problem. But it was 35 mil of Bravo's. You know, and obviously wages and yeah. all the stuff it probably took to get him out of Barca. Um, my thing is, your Haaland and Mbappe debate. Well, Mbappe is obviously going to Real Madrid, so you're going well. It's <laughs> Liverpool, um, yeah. And and obviously Haaland's going to be at City for the foreseeable goal. Oh, there's a chance. Oh, oh, it's a big chance, that. It's a big chance. Diaz again. He's just a proper defender, isn't he? I know he's yeah. a lot more than that. Like Ben Mees, Ben Mee, I love Ben, the, the opposite end of the pitch, because he's that. You know, the skill you've got is for finding the top bin and that incredible goal. He has, and good keepers have, for finding the ball that hits them right in the fucking bollocks yeah. or right in the dish. Um weirdly there's a skill in that I yeah, can't yeah. explain that yeah it's not one you really want to have but there is a skill in it yeah that's a great block I mean the, the, it's a good should, block. the it's midfielder a, should it's score it's a poor finish yeah. it's a poor finish there's so much to aim at there yeah he'd be disappointed he hasn't scored yeah Brentford are the set play team aren't they, they 
the uh, famously were struggling for set plays, and Matthew Benham's the gambling guy who's behind him. Him and Tony Bloom, the Brighton owner, had the same company and split. One yeah. does Brighton, one does um, Brentford. And I remember they were struggling to score set plays, and he, I think he allotted about 10,000 for every set play goal. And then the players obviously spread pro, pro rata between the team, and obviously the players then started practising staying out after training to practice to get the bonus and lo and behold started scoring more and more set play goals <laughs> um, and then he's kept it in he, but so he incentivizes the players in that way to you know obviously like all players Tish or most players if you offer them a few shilling to uh, do a little <laughs> bit more they will yeah did you have did you have that um, any of that in your, in your contract in terms of the individual stuff of 15 goals 20 goals um, so towards the back end of my career I had a goal bonus so that was kind of from 97 I think it was 96, 97, 98 so after I'd had all my really good seasons they put a goal bonus in and I fucking stopped scoring <laughs> did you take pen still? yeah yeah yeah. so I was on two grand a goal so I think I was only on I was on the good block what was that? I was on about two and a half grand a week, but two grand a goal. Right. And you start shooting more. Two grand appearance as well, I think. I didn't really. It didn't. Uh, didn't the change money the way you play. Yeah, you the money just, yeah, was never. Didn't, yeah, it was didn't never change about yeah. money for me. That was just a nice bonus at the end of the month. If if I scored a good few. Month. Was you um, Ian Bramford at the Avenue? Did you say uh, yeah. he made you the captain? Yeah. Just before he went? Yeah. Desperately trying to keep himself in a job. I see. I heard you talking about it, saying like you thought he'd get favour with the fans and that. Yeah. How did you find being the captain? Did it, like, some players need it, some players um, don't need it in terms of they're just going to play how they're going to play? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't crave it. Right. Um. You'd rather I just enjoyed, focus on your own, get, getting yourself ready. Yeah, I enjoyed it while I was playing well, because I wasn't, a, I wasn't an organizer. Shouting, and screaming. I wasn't, a, I wasn't one of them. So for me to be a captain, I had to lead by example, and so I had to be playing well to be comfortable in that role. And to be fair, when when he gave me the captaincy for the, the next kind of two years, I was playing good stuff because then Borley came in so just leading by example so there. I was leading by example scoring all the goals setting up loads of goals um, so everything was fine and then when Dave Merrington came in after Borley I had a really bad start the following season I couldn't couldn't get going we played a different formation I wasn't getting many chances and I wasn't playing particularly well my confidence was was kind of shot a little bit and because I wasn't playing well I went to the manager and I went this ain't right. I'm, if I'm going to be the captain, I've got to be playing well, and I'm not playing well, so just take the captaincy off me. Um, so he did. And did you find that liberated you a little bit? A little bit. I certainly played better the second half of the season than I did the first. Well, because people forget with the captaincy, there's the shaking hands, the referees, and there's other stuff that goes into it, the tickets and all the, that sometimes yeah. you just don't want, even yeah. though... And I was club you know, captain as well. It's an honour to be captain. Yeah. For, you know... So does that mean the lounges before or after? And uh, That was more, club captain was more kind of making sure that the lads turned up to their Yeah, you've got to get the bonuses sorted. Uh, yeah, bonuses, lads, appearances out in the community, <laughs> oh, all that kind of out, stuff, yeah. trying to get the lads out into yeah. the community and you know what they're like. Mm. You have to do that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so an enviable task, that, yeah. You end up doing a lot of that yourself. Yeah. Because people don't want to do it. Or just won't turn up, and yeah, and even it's, though um, it was in their contracts, yeah, it's it, it, it's a shitty end of the stick, that isn't it? Pull, <laughs> pulling the armband on and leading the team out, and the mascot out on a Saturday is nice. Lifting the trophies at Wembley or whatever is nice, but there's there's a lot that goes into being that. the captain. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> that's the upside of being the captain, sis. Yeah, oh, we played. But the bad side is all the fucking bollocks that you have to put up with. Yeah, um, and lads coming to you moaning because of all manner of different things and you're like I couldn't really give two fucks just yeah. get yourself ready to play did you have a, a strong leadership group there like that you could you could rely on 
Uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, I mean, obviously, when I first started, there was a lot of... Oh, that's oh, a chance. He's that's onside as well. There was a lot of experienced senior pros in the squad. So, there were Jimmy Case, mm. Peter Shilton, uh, Bondi was there Get up, yeah. when, I, when I made my debut. Um, you know, we had people uh, like oh. Nick Holmes and David Armstrong. So, like, really seniors. seasoned seniors pros and then as it evolved kind of Glenn Cockrell took over that that role for a few years what do you think of Nertis and the over the ball what's he done wrong there um, I mean it wasn't it wasn't bad technique he's just caught it on the outside of his foot it's a chance that it's a good him. chance yeah. rather than rather than catch it on the inside laces he's got it on the outside of his laces and he's thinking they getting it down yeah so you in that situation for me I would always be focusing on, on making sure that as you as you're gonna hit the hit the ball, your lace is down the middle of your boot here, I'm always focusing on this part of the, almost like a instep and a side foot. Taking making the power sure, off, making the sure, contact. And then making sure you get your contact and getting it down. Because as soon as you as soon as you go like you get your hip up and you and it catches the outside of your boot. It's yeah, only it's, going one way. It's, it only going, yeah. Yeah. it's only going up and spinny. It's like hitting a driver into the wind and you hit you that. See that tomorrow. Up and spinny one. <laughs> <laughs> you see plenty of that. Yeah, th that, it, it's that thing and they always say to you about keeping your knee over the ball. That's like the, the technical term of, of kind of... So you so you yeah, coming down I, onto I used it. To, yeah, I didn't really... I didn't really focus on the on the technical side of things. I, I was just focusing on the... the Laces, the, the contact. contact. All right. So it's like where you're putting your racket, getting your racket yeah. on at the right angle, yeah. Yeah. That's what people miss sometimes. People think it's like the more power you go with, like the better strike you get. But imagine some of the ones you hit. Timing. Yeah, it's like a golf shot. Yeah. You don't even feel it. You're like, my God, there must have been a few you've hit where you've gone. As soon so, as you've hit it, you know it's in. There was a goal I scored against uh, Liverpool 27 seconds into the game. Ball had got chipped up to the edge of the Liverpool box. I think it was Mark Wright gone up, headed. Craig Masker was challenging him. He headed it down, and I, I just came onto it, hit it on the half volley. I've seen it, yeah, yeah. And it never goes more than like a foot yeah. off the ground the whole way. Yeah. And it fires in the in the. They were the all balls. balls as well. Yeah, that was Bally's first game in charge, home game in charge, and that was um, twenty-seven so as as seconds. You, as soon in. as you've clipped, it's just soft. As you know, it's gone. gone yeah. and, and I've, I've hit it deliberately. Talking about that that technique where you're looking at the. In, just the inside bit of your laces so it went so it went in but I but I hit it so it had a little bit of draw on it all right so it's on the half volley but I'm but I'm hitting well, that's it. quite that's quite tricky to do that because yeah, it's easier to fade really it. really fade the half volley but to draw ones but I, I was so confident at that point I just strolled onto it and I just I just saw it, it was in a perfect stride pattern and I've just gone bang and as soon as it's left my foot I could feel the contact in the, exactly the right place so I know it's going to draw a little Actually. bit Hello. Oh, There's the hat trade. Oh. Harlan's great little pass on the. No, he doesn't. He, he gets Kane. We were talking about it before. His back to play stuff, but he links this really nice. Mm. Really nice. Has he got a hat trick for City before? No, that'll be his first one. That. That'll be his first one. I think. No way. He's just got that hat Second career hat trick. You're talking about your fantasy footy. Fantasy fantasy. It's always the way, isn't it? I'm telling you, I'm not an able to do now. It's gone mate. It's gone. So I, I think he's the most important. Hat -trick. A second career hat trick. But I don't know what competition the first one was in. Why? Why? Yeah, unless he's got a Champions United. League one. He might have a Champions League or a League Cup. United. Can't remember him scoring hat trick. Look at the little position now. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Man United. Two of them got the hat trick in the same yeah, game. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. They both got one. Yeah. 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 I mean. He's so well balanced, Has isn't he? Not to start for England in the Euros. See him there, doesn't look at the I ball was gonna ever. Say, yeah. I was going to say, he yeah. knows exactly where the ball is, he's just looking at the goalkeeper. Is that confidence, though? Is, in fact, he's a couple of goals in, he's, he's, he's high in confidence, Pep's playing with quite a bit. Yeah. Where you see people who go in, and as you said earlier on, I don't want to name the player's name in case you don't want to name it, but he's just thinking about hitting the target, egg goes down, and you look at Foden there, he never looks at the ball, All knows he's where it is, where trusting got... his first touch. Yeah. Just just waiting to, to for the keeper to make his mind up for him. 
and now you can rest your uh, your superstars. And it's just what on, you want to see with 20 to go Doku. with your Brentford. <laughs> bring on a tricky just winger. Is fucking lightning. ridiculous pace. <laughs> Someone who's an unbelievable one-on-one -on -one merchant. It's fascinating when I watch them because I, I always remember Sean Dyche and the defender's shoulders. But when I watch Manchester City, and I know they're the best players in the world, and I know they're the best coach in the world, but how well coached they are on the small details. Like yeah. watching the back four there, all moving, all of the shoulders facing the same way, so that if the ball gets played in behind, they can react to it. Now, as good as he is, Pep, and we spoke about the money he spent. It still takes an awful lot to keep the culture and discipline and, uh, as Klopp calls it, the mentality monsters yeah. absolutely on the money. Do you think having Chiki Bedekstein and uh, Soriano above him and, and kind of everybody knowing if you don't do it Pep's way, you're gone? No one can circumnavigate him and go no, to the owners as they can at PSG or yeah, as they yeah. can at Chelsea. Do you think that, that definitely leadership helps. cascading down through the club helps? Definitely. What What's your thoughts on Chelsea, Tis? What What you've seen there? Ah, uh, I think I've been really disappointed in Poch, to be honest. I thought with the players that he's got there, he would have got a better tune out of them. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of talent. There's a there. lot of players, though, isn't there? I know it's difficult when you've got so many new players to try and gel together as a team, but... I've been really disappointed in in his team. This so you, you imagine you 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 you've been in the dressing room. Only eleven lads are happy on a Saturday. Mm. You know you might get a few of the young lads who are happy to be in the squad. But realistically, if you've got a group of senior players, only eleven are really happy on a Saturday. If you've yeah, got a yeah. good culture, yeah. a few should that be fucking gutted if they're not playing. So you've got thirty odd players like they've got like senior players, and they're all on fortunes, and they've all got agents, and they've all got entourages. Yeah. And every time you pick a team, someone's fucking knickers it in, in a twist. It can't be easy, no matter how good of a manager you are, to yeah. police that kind of dressing room. That many egos, that many egos. I mean, if if I was the manager in that position, I think I would just have got all the agents together and just gone, look, if your lad's not happy, we've got a director of football, give him a ring. Don't bother me. I'm too busy trying to pick a team, get a team to win a game. Any of that stuff, you take it somewhere else. Meritocracy, the best players will play. The best team will be picked. Meritocracy, Joey, that's very it controversial. It is, yeah. Well, unfortunately, Why? football, Why? It's, it's still relevant. <laughs> Why would football. you think that that should be <laughs> allowed in this world of DEI? Well, unfortunately, at this moment in time, it hasn't quite got into the on-the-pitch on stuff, although it's infected everywhere else. We're mm. still... The best players play because that's the best chance of getting the best results. Exactly. I mean, how long it'll last, who knows? But um, I mean, I'm currently sure. we're, we're just hanging on by a, by a thread. Well, well, ultimately. Do you think we'll ever get? A, do you think we'll ever get a time where um, the football teams will merge, and you'll have to have a certain amount of women in your team? It's a possibility. I, 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 I wouldn't have said it ten years ago, but I'm certainly I'm certainly. Um, <laughs> Thinking it's possible now, you know. It's the, have you seen the thing with Mark Cuban, the uh, Dallas Mavericks owner, with the DI, and he's brought it into all his businesses. And there's this bot. I think it's a bot called Wu Wei that's set up. It's got thousands of followers, but it's a Chinese lady who's saying, "Well, you've done all your diversity and all your other businesses. Can I come and play as a point guard for the Dallas Mavericks, please? Because you haven't got a Chinese lady playing in your team. And if you want to fit your DEI quotas, Brilliant. and he's just been, she's just been har harassing him." And Elon Musk and all that have got in on it, and it's quite funny because it's you know it's a joke, but it's it it's obviously oh, it's obviously making light of a, of a, you know how can a, how can you have um, DEI in a basketball team or a football team? You need the best player who's available to play the positions to give yourself the best chance. It, well, the DEI is an interesting one for me because I've seen Chelsea get done by Wolves four two at home. Usually with Chelsea's league position, that's an you know in the Bramovich era, there's nobody would have lasted that long. But usually, 
there'd be a public outcry of Chelsea's, you know, Graham Potter's in there and he's English and let's get rid of him. But because Poch is one of the darlings, there's no pressure on him. Interesting, then, that, isn't it? And then they're all interested in, obviously, the Chelsea ladies' manager, Emma Hayes, who I think is a fantastic women's manager and got a great credibility and she's doing incredible things in the women's game, speaks really well when she comes across in the men's game. And I'm told she's going to come and she could be one day the manager from the women's game to do well in the men's game. And I'm like, why don't Chelsea give her a fucking job then? Because she knows the club better than anyone. Get mm. her in a potch, give Emma Hayes the job and let's see if she can do it. Because she's got all the players. Will they do it? Watch the space. I can't fucking see it. <laughs> but I'm like, well, if you want to, f- if you truly, you know, if she's as good as what you keep telling us all, give her your fucking men's job because, you know, if she's an elite, elite level coach, she, she'll get a tune out of them. Mm. But will they do it? I don't know. Be interesting to see if they do. Um, At some point, somebody will do it because. Well, you had the Union Berlin assistant manager get promoted because did you see their manager grabbed Leroy Sane by the face or something and he was out of the touchline spat and he lashed Sane and got a ban and his assistant was a female so she took the game and they won 1-0 at the weekend you obviously had Big Dunk sacked by that madcap Forest Green owner fucking Just Stop Oil Burke <laughs> um, Dale Vance Vince whatever his Dale name Vince, is yeah. and then he replaced Big Dunk with um, the assistant of the women's team or something like that until they got a few shit results then she was gone <laughs> uh, do you ever think we'll see a women's manager in the men's game um, do I if if things are allowed to continue unchecked the way they are then yes there will be yeah yeah but we have to think we have to well, hope we have to hope we've reached peak wokeness now Tis, with the <laughs> yeah. you know you'd like to think so I think more and more men, people are getting fed yeah. up with it and, yeah. and you're right. The the whole meritocracy thing has got to come back into play. Well, it, it's like if you're on an aeroplane and you've seen this DI creeping in and obviously Americans are further down the rabbit hole than us and it's starting to unravel disastrously for them. You've seen with Claudine Gay in the university uh, yeah. situation with the plagiarism row. Yeah. But also there's the big thing with the Boeing 747s where you had the DI company who were celebrating... Uh, all women's team and then the doors started flying off the fucking planes <laughs> so it, it's the same I'm, I'm pretty much you're the same as me if you went for heart surgery and it, your life depended on it you would want the best surgeon to perform the surgery yeah not the person who's ticked the box or filled the quota correct so I don't get why we can't roll that out in everyday life it tends to work no. if you just do yeah, it no it's it's a radical idea but yes, it nuts, isn't it? yeah it is nuts um, and, and <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the thing. At, at this moment in time, common sense is not common practice. No. You know, common sense is not very common at all. So I know you have daughters. Are they sporty? Yeah. If you've seen a, a man transitioning and saying he's a woman and competing in sports against a female, as a parent, would you be worried? Yeah. As a competitor, do you yep. think it's fair? Nope, not fair at all. And and yet, that's deemed... Oh, my God. Oh, what's he doing? He's cleaned him out. I think that's a foul. How has the ref not seen that? He's properly cleaned him out. See, that's what I love about De Bruyne. He couldn't cross... He just, does, he just makes the right decision. Yeah. So... He could have tried something there, and he's just gone no. no and he just not. gone for it. He just made the right decision for the team. I think. Yeah. I think they might look at this, but it'll be a free kick outside. Um, <laughs> that is insane. That's <laughs> the ref not seen that as a foul. I mean, I think, oh my god, how has he missed that? He's looking right at it. I think Aki. I think that's a foul by Aki getting yeah, up Aki's and using fouled in the, the shoulders. Ball. I mean, it's definitely a foul by Edison. But it's only a free kick anyway. It's only a free kick anyway, isn't it? It's only a free kick anyway. It's outside the box. How has he let that go? That's poor refereeing. But yeah, that... Um, I, I think... See, I think the women Cheers, need man. to stand up for themselves here in that situation. And 
high profile ones who are being forced to uh, compete against biological males need to walk out just we've seen it with the was one in snooker someone pool, done in pool or something like that one. yeah yeah but that's the first one I've heard of. Well, you had the girl Riley Gaines in the swimming who's copped a load of flack in America um, because, obviously, the Lou Thomas, um, yeah. she was very vocal and got, obviously, um, nailed for that. Yeah. You've obviously had uh, the woman golfer... Sorry, the man golfer win the women's golf last week. I fucking keep getting confused all the time. You have to, be, <laughs> you have to, you have to keep abreast of it. Um, and, you know, you have... Did you see the tackle in the rugby... I think it was Rugby League or Rugby Union. It was a that proper spike, wasn't he it? He actually stopped just before. So he, he, he actually stopped just before because if he'd have carried it through, that would have been people in a wheelchair kind yeah, of level, yeah. which is... Yeah. Do, are, is that what it's going to take? Are we going to need to see somebody tiss in... in, in you know, I think in, that is what it's going to take before but I think, sanity I think, returns. I suppose society always has to have an absurd incident before it goes, oh, actually, yeah, that was absurd. Like, yeah. I, I was saying to the lads on trigonometry, no matter what we think, in a thousand years, you know, we're going to read about this decorated s swimmer, Lou Thomas, won all these women swimming, Olympic, whatever, and then they'll they'll go, fucking hell, we'll test the bones, and they go, these were fucking... These, these, how stupid were these? They had a man in a, in a women's uh, and swimming race, is there? And, and they've been celebrating it. this man as a, as a woman's uh, champion. Did, did I read it in the US boxers? Um, Two years, yeah, there's something going on, yeah. Um, um, i seen Barry McGuigan tweet something about it. Biological males are allowed to It's like a two-year period if they haven't like uh, had testosterone before 16 or something. But then we were talking to Tony Bellew um, about that, saying... You know, physical sports like that where you're punching someone in the face you know a male even if a male transitions after puberty they're saying about if if if, if for the boxing if someone transitions before puberty you carry like they've got a different cool off Peter well you know in the WSL if you want to play in the WSL you, you have to have 12 months you can still keep your meat and two veg but you'd have to have a period of testosterone suppressant suppression yeah which obviously you, you've you've had the benefit of 50 odd years of testosterone you should be okay <laughs> it, and and then you can play in the in the WSL because just to poke the box I was like right if these keep fucking having a pop at me how hard would it uh, just to piss them all off I'm just going to take the WSL by storm I'll be the Matt Letizia of the WSL <laughs> which I could never be in the men's game um, and I'll be scoring hat-trick after <laughs> Philly Foden after hat-trick and you know at, at that point will he concede how absurd their position is and even then, I'm like, I don't know. Or would they have to buy into me and go, now we can't criticise Josephine Barton. He's, <laughs> she's the new uh, sensation of the uh, WSL. Player of um, the year. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be fancying myself for that. Well, they wouldn't be able to critique me, would they? So I can almost start afresh. <laughs> that might be the future. <laughs> this podcasting doesn't take off. <laughs> it might be the future. <laughs> No, with the um, that, but that's the absurdity of it. It's like even I'm forty-one now, so you know, obviously, my best physical years are behind me, but I'd still be a really, really good woman's player. Like I'd, I'd fancy myself to at least get in team of the year. Oh, I mean, You'd, I'd be embarrassed for you if you didn't. Well, uh, you know, obviously, Tiss, I've uh, you know, I've, I've, <laughs> I've had a few years out of the. Uh, of the competitive level of the game, but I would still fancy myself massively just on. Yeah. Just on nous, really. I mean, but do you know what? Do you, the, the annoying thing about it all is that it's almost like it's almost like you're being forced into liking women's football, which makes you dislike to, it. Like, because you, because you know, otherwise it's oh, that's a chance for him. No, he's he'll be disappointed with that. Yeah, it, it's almost like you're shamed and you're a misogynist if you don't like women's football. It's, it's not okay now to say, oh, I don't, do you know what? I don't like rugby. Yeah. I don't like blokes rugby. I don't, don't understand. I've said I don't like cricket. I don't, I don't like rugby. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm... But nobody, nobody, nobody mithers you about that. If you yeah. go, I don't like rugby. No one goes, oh, what's wrong with that? A bit classist. Uh, but you go, I don't like women's football. And they go, oh, a bit sexist, isn't it? Yeah. A bit misogynistic. 
Like, no. It doesn't entertain me. What's wrong with that? Yeah. You, you'll have to... I feel like when I say that now, I've now got to qualify that by by going, but there are women, some women's sports I do like. Yeah. yeah. I'm not... Yeah. I'm not sexist because I, I, I like, like watching other the women's sport. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm not. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not racist because I've got, I've got black. black. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a black friend. <laughs> yeah. So and it's like, come well, on. It's like it's like someone what saw the other day about in? now if they put on the Twitter they have to put like anti-fascist. It's like oh well, I didn't think you was a fascist anyway, <laughs> no, but yeah. now like you're putting that. Ricky's amazing. Yeah, Ricky about that. Yeah, I've seen you yeah. tweeting about it. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which is you know if we can't have a laugh and we can't have comedy and we can't have serious discussions and we can't disagree. Well, we're fucked, aren't we? Yeah. So that means we've got to all agree. So if if, if the if the group say, right, group we're think. all getting the vaccine, so we all got to get one, group even think. if it's the wrong thing. Yeah. And even if the evidence is overwhelming, this is not good, like they're saying... They will try and suppress the evidence. Well, they were saying the one in four doing. chance, it gives you a one, an increased chance of uh, 25% of uh, mortality by getting it, which it was meant to uh, not give you the disease. It also makes you more likely to catch... Yeah. ...Covid. Which is... I've seen the stuff coming out. I don't know whether you've seen the Antipodean, is it? New Zealand, obviously Australia. I was watching America because of Trump and hydrochloroquine. What do you and... think about Trump? I, 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 I was going to get to you with Trump to now, so I was going to say to you about, I watched New Zealand and obviously Jacqueline de Arden was held up as this, look how good of a leader she is and she's a female and all that. And then obviously she she's ran for the hills now because of what you got up to in the forced vaccination on people. And the the Antipodeans, the Australians and New Zealanders have been a lot further down the line with Pfizer and what's going on holding them to account. And then I've seen South Africa and obviously the guy, I tweeted you a video this week Mark about Sexton, yeah. um, some of that information. And then you look at the other side of the pond, we talked about the Americans and obviously I was following Joe Rogan at the time. I was watching Chris Cuomo before he got cancelled. Uh, Fauci on the on, and obviously they were ridiculing Trump because they were trying to get him out and you know I thought Trump was a bit of a mad cat maggot and you know a bit of a strange crowd he had to um, woo to get into power but then the stuff he said on the horse tran or horse uh, tranquilizer was right hydrochloroquine uh, hydroxychloroquine Hi ivermectin was ivermectin. right and should so turned out to be right and now since Biden's been in. You're now looking at Trump going, he's the last chance of peace in Ukraine and, and maybe peace in the Middle in East. The Middle East, yeah. Which is absurd because he's a mad character. Yeah. But fantastic golf courses. So if you ever want to invite Absolutely. me and Tiss onto any of his golf courses, Trump we'll Aberdeen. Played that. Trump uh, Aberdeen. So I wouldn't want to play it in the wind. I, I haven't played Turnbury since it's been done. I've played no, the I old Turnbury, but I've heard it's mega. Yeah. Um, That's mega. Mega, yeah. I've heard it's mega, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> when you look at Trump, I'm like, with a vote of Biden or Trump, this who would you, you know, I'd, 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 oh, I couldn't the two vote of for them, Biden. I don't think I could vote for he somebody look, with dementia. He doesn't look right, does he? And then obviously the, the suppressing of his lap, his son's laptop, and all that stuff. And, oh, yeah. You know, all the Russian, oh, yeah, all the, the Russian collusion in the election, and then um, the the big thing for me was. The fact that the Wall Street Journal, which I considered quite a reputable paper at the time, and you're, you're looking for bastions of truth in an in an era of not trusting all the institutions you were brought up uh, trusting, and when the the Hunter by the laptop was suppressed, and yeah. I, I'm just like that's just wrong because that is an, a bit of information. I think the government that information would have. Well, of course. Change the course. How can you of the run the country if you can't run your own house? Yeah, that would have changed the course of the election yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. Trump, how do you find Trump? I find him strangely entertaining. China, China. I, I, I used to, in the early days of COVID, I would stay up specifically to watch his press conferences yeah. with the media because I'd just. Yeah. Change the game, didn't he? <laughs> just calling out the, the fake news and yeah. all that stuff and he was just so dismissive yeah. of them he just used to laugh it yeah. was very entertaining he, he, he changed the game like no, like nobody thought you couldn't have a sitting president tweeting at the frequency he was it was yeah, almost yeah. like imagine like imagine like a world beforehand where you were with, with, with that access somebody could tweet the president and annoy him and he would go on a one hour <laughs> two hour binge 
And this is a guy who's sitting with the biggest nuclear capability at his fingertips. You know, yeah. You know, just a it deranged, is, deranged. You know, he's it a narcissist. Is a bizarre world, a bizarre world. And then you've got a social media company that could, at the at the flick of a button, cancel the president of the United States. Yeah, well, this was the, this is the Jack line. Dorsey era. Is this pre Musk? Are you yeah, on about yeah. Jack Dorsey? And obviously, they look like they've suppressed a lot of public discourse for, you know, their agenda. Definitely. Definitely. So, so, so when you look at media now, and we're getting to the dynamics of the game, City are cruising this, cruising this, um, from a from a tricky position, being one that one down to a team that plays five three two. I never, I never feel like when Man City are one 0 down, I never feel like it's a tricky position for them. What? When you when you look at like I'm looking at the subs that have come on here, Doku, Kovacevic, like. Some squad, it's just it? player after player, isn't Some it? Really, squad. you know, the, you you know, every player is an interna an international, and Oof. you know, the, 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 you know, they've lost Cole Palmer to Chelsea, who I think's been great for Chelsea. Yeah, he's been one of the few successes in that team, I'd say. I haven't missed a beat, have they? You know, he's a bit part player at City, in, in fairness to Cole, and obviously become a major player at Chelsea, albeit it's a, it's not Chelsea's greatest period. Yeah. City's academy. It's amazing. Do you think, I mean, the academy yeah, system. I mean, just, Foden's, you know, legitimate world level play at it for England. I think in the future he's got to do it at a more consistent basis, and I would imagine at major tournaments for the national team tis yeah, to be considered. Uh, yeah, that, that's but, the only thing missing really at the moment. But playing in that team, you're going to get opportunities to win trophies. Yeah, and obviously, if you're playing in Man City's first team, you. You're going to be there there about for England, I would imagine. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, if Pep Guardiola th thinks you're good enough to play in his team on a regular basis, yeah. if you're the England manager and you don't pick that player, well, it's like the boy who's got in the England squad, who's you know Rico Lewis, who's you know been playing in in and out, laying his trade. Yeah. But all of a sudden, in in an England era where I think Rico's recognised position would be right back although he inverts him and plays him centre mid mm. but in an era of Kyle Walker in an era of Reese James in an era of Trent Alexander-Arnold um, you wouldn't expect Rico to get many minutes no but I think the Pep Guardiola effect and the fact that he's inverting him Southgate thinks well how can I not pick him if, mm. if the best coach in the world the best manager in the world is picking him yeah it must be hard though when you're Southgate and all the players are like mm, well you know, you, you know, the England job for me was always the, the pinnacle. It was like the best England, the best England produced became the England manager, and now it's it's not. It hasn't been since. Probably Capello left. Yeah. Probably, you know, Steve McLaren gave me my cap. I think. How, how do you feel about the England manager not being English? How did you feel about that when there were foreign managers managing England, given our do you know at the time, standing in the game? Yeah, do you know at the time, I just wanted the best person for the job because I'm a meritocrat, as you notice. I don't know whether you've gathered, picked that I, up. I hadn't noticed, actually. <laughs> but now the more and more I think it. about it, I think if all the players have to be from a certain country, and I know we negate it sometimes with the rugby union and with the, some of the players in terms of nationalising them, and I've seen... A lot of people get caps now because they're scared of them going to play for other countries, which I think is the wrong message. Yeah. But I think if the, all the players have to be from a certain country, I think the manager should as well. Yeah. I think I think the, the federation should put that stipulation on yeah. to encourage the best coach and the best people from that country to get the job done. I agree. But as if you'd asked me when I was a player, I, I, I would have been different on that for sure. Yeah. Because I wanted, the, I wanted if it was Mourinho, give us the best chance of winning the world. A World Cup or the Euros, I would want Mourinho. I, I just wonder. So, say we had like when Sven was manager, yeah, and say we'd have got to the World Cup final, and we were playing against Sweden, and and we win the game. What is what Sven feeling like as a Swedish yeah. citizen? How, how, where's there's got to be some conflict inside of him. Yeah, but I think once the 
performance bonuses kick in and you and you've you know I think you know you're going to get a night or like a couple of mil well for at least for, for winning it I, I, I mean yeah it depends how patriotic you are like I mean I would never have like played for Scotland or Ireland because no, see, I did I, never feel Scottish or Irish as a Channel Islander could you played for England Ireland Scotland or Wales yeah you them so after I'd played for England a couple of times my first couple of caps were friendlies so I still qualified for the other countries, and Wales made it a, an inquiry um, about taking. But I, I'd already played for England, yeah. and all I ever wanted to do as a kid was play for England. Yeah. So didn't didn't even cross my mind to, to change countries because I just think that's the right thing to do. Well, I always thought of it as I'm thinking, if I'm taking someone who is Scottish or someone who is Irish, it's like I never ever. If, I, I, as I say, for, for me, Eng- I was English when England played at World Cups. I was, you know, obviously 94 was different because England never qualified. So it was like, okay, yeah. who are we going to support here? And obviously Ireland, Jack Charlton, yeah. and Liverpool's a big Scouse immigrant population. So it was easy for me to, you know, yeah. but then Euro 96 and France 98, you know, you, you're back on the England train because, you know, we've got a, a, a team that's qualified. But in terms of playing, I don't know. I, I don't know about this in the comments. This is why I struggle with the women commentating on the men's game. When I stopped playing, I went to work on the Brazil World Cup. I think it was 2014, was it? The Brazil, Brazil, Brazil World Cup. Mm-hmm. So we got asked by Eurosport and uh, done a bit of BBC on the commentary. But I only played 18 minutes for England in a friendly. I know it was against Spain and, and they were... But I hadn't, I hadn't played international football and then because I had a decent Twitter following, they're asking me to talk, and I'm like, I've never been to one of these tournaments under this pressure, and and, and I didn't feel qualified to talk about it. Similarly, if it was to do European or Champions League, I'm like, I don't really, I've watched them, but I, so I always felt uncomfortable. And then, yeah, and then I watch women who've never kicked the ball fucking standing there saying, he's shite. I'm going, <laughs> who the fucking hell do you? It's like me standing, like, because I've hit a few golf balls, I'm going, standing there on the range telling Big A anybody, like, you know, <laughs> At some point, you have to accept that. Because I always remember being in a dressing room. And if you went in the dressing room and you weren't a good player, well, you hadn't had any fucking credibility. You kept your fucking nut down until you'd earned enough credibility in the, in the heat of battle. Yeah. And now, every everyone goes, well, I've got an opinion. And I'm like, yeah, 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 but no one gives a fuck about it because you've got, you've got no fucking credibility. Yeah. You know, the same way, because I've driven a car, I've got a licence and I've driven a 100 mile an hour on the motorway, I can tell Ayrton Senna or Jensen Button how to drive. Like, and I, and I think we've just lost that, and then we've lost the ability to say to people, hey, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Who fucking asked you? <laughs> and if you do that now, you're a bully or you're aggressive. Yeah. Instead of saying, no, no, you've got no... Your credibility Credibility, yeah. You've got no right to be... Pop- putting your opinion on the table because there's people here who have got credibility and do you don't want think, to listen. Do you think it's the deliberate dumbing down of society by having un- people who are not really credible commentating on lots of different things? So it's what you spoke about earlier, that Yuri Brezhnev. Have you, have you seen that uh, lecture, the KGB guy? Um, the useful idiots yeah, yeah. in terms of... I, I sometimes think, well, if we all see it, they're the smart as us. They must see the fact that these are making a cut. These are making a pig's ear of this. These are making a bit of a cunt of the situation. We're trying to get rid of misogyny, sexism, and racism because that's what DI is about. Reducing that is by giving up. Well, reducing that by giving people opportunities, creating opportunities for I people who've maybe not a, had them I before. Th- I actually think it's a racist. Yeah, well, it thing is in yeah. itself. It is, yeah, it is. Because once you discriminate against any group for any reason, it is. So. Just because it's discrimination against white people, it's kind of like, oh, well, that's okay. That's okay. So, that racism is loud. That's a good racism. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. But yeah. every other bit of racism is fine. Isn't uh, isn't fine. But against white people, go for it. Be as racist as you want. Yeah, and that's that, that is strange. Absolute bullshit. Yeah, that that is strange. And the the the, the problem you've got is if if you point that out. It's you're playing a victim card, and it's like, no, no, we're just saying that this is fair, happening. We fair, need to stop fair. this from happening. Fair's fair. Yeah, and the wh- pendulum has gone from here, and it's gone to there, when really all it needed to do was stop there. Yeah, but it could, ne- it could never have done that though, can it? Because it has to go. I always think it has to go absurd, back to absurd, 
it's a little bit less absurd, a little bit less absurd, and then somewhere in the middle, after a war and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people have died, we go, ah, oh, we shouldn't have really done that, should we? Because the First World War is a, is a disagreement over who sits where at the dinner table of, of Queen Victoria. Three family, um, family egos who've all got principalities and kingdoms to run, and then the working class go in the meat grinder. My granddad was gassed at Yepes, uh, great, great, great grandfather. Um, for what? For, for, for kings to be kings yeah. and, and empires to be ruled by those kings. And then Second World War, you're thinking, okay, maybe we've learned the lessons of not being as cruel as we need to be. Mm -hmm. And then clearly now we've got the person, and they always say, don't the people who were abused end up becoming, a, or, or high probability of becoming abusers? And for as long as I can remember, um, the world's been at war, and it's just mm. it's, like that. Someone's, I always think, as a father, that's someone's son, someone's daughter, and F we know it just doesn't work. Follow the money, military industrial complex, yeah. Um, but where do we, where do we draw the line? The useful oh, oh, idiots keep falling for it. We've got no recognised army tests now. With the diversity, we've seen a massive decrease in people wanting to sign up for the armed forces. Well, as you can imagine, why would you want to risk your life for the country um, if they would rather give provisions to people who come to this country illegally than yeah. look after the people who fought in wars for this country and, and picked up? Exactly. Um, um, injuries. Do you, do you look to the for the future optimistically? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm always. You believe in good. You believe in. I believe that there's way more good people on this planet than there is bad, and eventually, I think, I think they win. Good overcomes evil. Yep. I agree with you. I totally. And you, you, you look around you at times and you think how and when and if they're ever going to come and then there's little things that happen you just see little signs little signs of the resistance fighting back or you see someone spread an inspirational post or an inspirational message or someone stand up to and you think well if he can resist and, and, and I think COVID I think before COVID I think they had the majority convinced and the majority believed and I think after co I think they've overstepped the boundaries yeah, and I, I think, think they have. they've lost the majority now I think they've definitely overplayed their card and more and more people every single day are waking up to the fact that they've been duped they've been played and there are people who are in government who have no regard for the people that they're meant to be looking after well yeah I mean we've seen that with obviously policy after policy but like the PPE is the is the prime for me the biggest fuck you hmm. to to everybody in terms of um, you know not only we're in a global pandemic and you have to accept that there's people who've made bad decisions trying to do the right thing but when you're basically feathering your nest by saying look go over here and this will happen the, the, the challenge for us is, I think is Will they ever be held to account for what they've done? Will mm. there be a day of reckoning or a, or a period of reckoning for malpractice in office? I'm sure that the people uh, in Germany during World War II that went along with everything, I'm sure that the resistance in Germany would have had the same questions. And eventually they did with Nuremberg. Yeah, you had the Vichy, in, the Vichy government was set up in France, but there was a big French resistance all across Europe. We've had those resistances. When I look at the kind of, what you talk about there, Germany, a lot of good people got caught up with the chaos and, and the Nazi and the, the, the ideology that went. And there's the famous film, I think, called Ordinary Men, is it, about it doesn't take I've evil men that. to... Well, there's the famous book, um, Victor Frankl's A Man's Search for Meaning, about surviving the um, prisoner of war camps and the concentration camps. And the big thing that kind of made them through, made them get through, was 
like they thought the strongest people survived and they didn't and it was kind of people who had this hope and optimism out, out the backside of it oh, okay yeah and frankel's um frankel's big take out of it or well, one thing i got out of it was the worst people in the concentration camps weren't the nazis it was the people the jewish people who'd been given positions of power by the nazis because uh, they had to be even crueler to the to their own people to gain uh, favor okay, with yeah, the nazis yeah. Yeah. which 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 when i talk about covid and i don't want to confuse the two because covid and and being in the nazi party are obviously um metaphors we use not uh similes yeah. but people who make mistakes tend to double down in those mistakes rather than turning yes. around and saying do you know what like we said if yeah. new information comes like listen i fucking made the balls of it i was wrong on that look this is this is the position i'm going to take now yeah the problem you've got is when people know they've made mistakes and then they try to cover it up or they try to um, forget it happened or or actually that's what happened in all world's books they change no that didn't happen this is what happened now which is what i'm seeing change history people on tv who've fought who've told people to get vaccines people who've you know, and then I've gone, well, no, I didn't say that. I was just saying I think it'd be a good idea to get vaccinated. I'm like, no, no, you were saying fucking pin people down and force yeah. them to get them. Yeah. Um, so hopefully next time we speak, mate, um, the world will have... Come to its senses. ...garnered a bit of common sense. Put put that into practice so it now becomes a bit of common practice and um, hopefully we'll be a little bit clearer about what type of government and... and um, laws we will be living under for the for the next four and a four and a half years <laughs> Tis, thanks so much for coming in Pleasure, city, city 131 um, we'll just wrap a few through questions dying for the piss <laughs> come on go on i'll do a few questions yeah. fucking hell um, so a couple for matt i know you touched on it before did um did you ever give an honest thought about playing for any of the other nations um, no, never, never a second thought. No, I didn't have a lot of luck though. Because when Wales asked me if I would play for them, I went. I, a journalist asked me, and I and I said no. And uh, so, it went in all the papers that I turned Wales down. And then about a week later, we got drawn. Southampton got drawn away in the League Cup at Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine the reception I got at Ninian Park that day. <laughs> Do you think that's the end of the title or Man City wrapped up the title race after this result? Oh no, there's still there's still a long way to go. Lots of things can happen in football. Um, but as we said before, I think if City keeper all their key players fit from now to the end of the season then I think it will take a hell of an effort to over, overtake them but funny things happen in football so you never know yeah someone asked who was the biggest lunatic that you ever played with biggest lunatic um, biggest lunatic we didn't have many loons we had a guy called we had a guy called Neil Heaney, who, um, when sober, was a really nice, funny fella. Um, but give him a couple of drinks, Joey might relate to this. No, no, I'm I'm all right in the drink. Just have bad moments. I've seen these people like, who give him a, a couple of drinks, and it's like turns into some yeah, some strange. I played with a couple of lads who have out of body experiences in it, like totally like night and day different people. Well, we used to, so Neil Heaney, because of how he was when he'd had a few drinks, his nickname at the club was Norm. Can you, under, can you guess Norm. why? Norman. Norman. Mailer. Bates. No. Bates. Fucking hell. Yeah. Norman Mailer's a famous uh, journalist, writer, isn't he? Norman Bates, is that the Bates psycho. Motel Psycho? Or like, a bit before my time, I remember it, yeah. Bates Psycho. So, yeah, Mike Newell's nickname, nickname was that, wasn't it? Where Mike Newell Psycho as well. Sure he was. He's meant to be another Ravenard case, wasn't he, Newley? Yeah. Because you'd had Shearer, Sutton, Newell, oh. Gallagher. <laughs> had a good side there, Blackburn, didn't he? That, they that, did, um... didn't Yeah. They were hard to play against. One for Tess. Um, did you ever give 
uh, a thought of going into management and stuff like that? Uh, only once did I contemplate it. And that was when Southampton were halfway down the championship. Uh, Harry Redknapp had just left and the club was in a bit of turmoil and I thought, can't get any worse. So, uh, so I thought I'd try and help them out. And um, little did I know that it did get worse. We, we, were, we went down to League One the following season. Um, but I'd, me and Franny Benali actually went to um, Clive Woodward. Clive, Clive Woodward, yeah, I've met it? Clive a few times, yeah. So Clive was at yeah. Southampton with Harry. Hated what, each what other. What combination yeah, that was, hated, hated each other. other. And then, um, so I had a, me and Franny had a meeting with Clive Woodward to talk about maybe going in as joint managers. And um, we basically went into the meeting and before we could even talk about, you know, being joint managers, Clive had, had already got his plan sorted and he wanted me and Franny to be the two coaches underneath him. And I was like, nah, that's not going to work. <laughs> So, so nothing came of it. And that was the only time I'd written. And it wasn't out of any great desire to be a manager. It's because I just saw the club was in a bit of a state and it wasn't out. in a great shape. And I thought I could do something to try and help out. Yeah. 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 She had came into Newcastle and sim similar tried to keep them up, yeah. <laughs> Felt for him because no, no one want to know now as a manager. You can't, like, no matter how fucking good you've been as a player. It's just not your your playing skill isn't applicable. Like there's so there's many nothing that's applicable, is it, from no, your playing it's, days it's to bizarre. managing? Like, there is some stuff to this in terms of like in, coaching but, wise. Yeah, the coaching the coaching aspect, the management stuff. Like, you gotta be a really really good liar as well. Like you can't <laughs> tell people the truth. That's not saying lying. I don't know. There's a difference in that. You got a liar, and some. To be a, ma a really good manager, you can't really tell people the truth, or be it they've got to feel it's authentic. So even if you're leaving them out of the team, you know, and leaving you out today because there's you know something coming up, or you've got to have a way of like, like being a politician, you know, dealing with the press, dealing with players. As I can't imagine even now. We look at this on air, but I can't imagine now with their egos and all that, like you know, their entourages. But it's just such like that's why I look at Pep and I think fair play to you. You know, you you rules it with a you cross him, Cancelo, you done. You that's hard to establish for for an elite level coach. Like Arteta is trying to do it his way, but I think Arteta is like the luckiest man on earth. I think how he's managed to say what he said, do what he's do. Like I watched that All or Nothing documentary, and I thought he's the worst manager I've ever seen. Oh, really? That, yeah. I just thought the way he went for. I was like, oh, my, I'd hate to play for you. But then, you think he's about to go? Like I thought he was on. He was on a bad run, and then he gets a result yesterday. Yeah. You know, it just. So yeah, you have to accept that after a period. You know, he's obviously um, a talented coach. But I just. I, that team talk he gives at Anfield where he does the t build up and he plays all the, the Anfield crowd noise and the fucking team I'm just like oh, I can't have you at all couldn't have and I, I don't think he'll win a trophy like a league or anything I don't think he'll do it at Arsenal I just don't think I think last year was his best chance yeah and the money they've spent has gone under the radar they've, they've had absolute buckets to spend with uh, the, yeah. the LA Rams guy in the LA Raiders LA Rams is it um City look like the back now. Klopp and Liverpool will do the art strings one and push them close, but I don't think he'll get it done. Yeah. Arsenal have finished third, and then it's a dog shoot for fourth. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't see anything else. Quick one on managers. Uh, bit of a popular question. Roy Hodgson or Palace? Is he on his, on his lazies? I think so. Looks that way, don't I? I the, think so. After the last few results. I mean, it was was never going to be a long term appointment anyway, was it? To be honest, well, I've only done it for a short period, but I'm at seven in his mid seventies now, Roy. Right. I didn't when I played and I went into the media. I pontificate about managers like that, like oh, I've got it, and now because of coach, I'm like, fucking what a what a man, what what a what a to do that for yeah, that long, what a man, yeah, what, what a. He, he managed me for one game. Where'd he get you? Not a lot of people know that. Where'd you have Roy? 
So, <laughs> bizarre story. I was on holiday in Australia, in Sydney. So I was going out with a girl from who lived in Sydney at the time, and um, so I was on holiday in the. In the you married in, someone? Are you married to an Australian? No, not that. No. Was you married to an Australian? No, I was engaged, but I didn't right. get married. So I was I was in Sydney on holiday in the in between end of season and to be like five weeks off. So I went to Australia, and it was in. 1999 and they just built the new stadium for the Olympics in 2000 and so they were having uh, an inaugural football match a world football 11 against the Socceroos uh, at this at the new uh, Olympic Stadium and I was there on holiday and I got a phone call from uh, who was the guy who was an Australian cricketer Ricky Pont and Dean, uh, Mike, Dean Jones, I think it was. It might have been your time. Cricket, so anyway, so I had a call from him and he's, he's gone, uh, he's gone, Matt, he said, hey, you're in Sydney. I went, yeah. He said, have you got your football boots with you? <laughs> and I went, no. He went, oh, he well, said, he's out of he said, he said uh, we've got this World Eleven game at the Stadium Australia. He said, we've had a load of players pull out through injury and stuff. He said, we're struggling for players. Would you come and play? I went, yeah, I can get a pair of boots, don't worry. So I went, went into town, got a pair of football boots. Size were your tits, eight? Uh, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yeah, eight. I was That's between, size, eight, between eight and nine. Did um, you ever look at players? You can tell a player by the fucking boots, can't you? Yeah. You can see a shit player. <laughs> Ali Dye must have had fucking big snide boots on when he's turned up. You've just gone, he's shite. Definitely. So, yeah, so Roy Hodgson was managing the World Eleven All right. football team that day, so I ended up... What, what shape did he play? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was there was no shape when I went on. Old Roy when he went like yeah, went yeah. out to Scandinavia, we, we, went to Italy, did really re- well off the back. You remember Switzerland doing well in that World Cup, was it? Yeah, yeah. Euros yeah. '96, I think England played Switzerland in the group stages. Chapuisar, yeah, Stefan Chapuisar, yeah, right, Dortmund yeah. striker. Yeah, and you had Shriko Sforza who played for Bayern Munich as well. Um, because even when I think about you, I'm thinking there of, of '90. And obviously David Platt scores and Cameroon in that World Cup. Obviously Toto Scalacci top scorer. And it was meant to be other people's World Cup, but ended up being Gaza hijacked it with the number 19. And when you look when you look back through through that era, I also remember the Bel- there was a great Belgian player called Enzo Schifo. Enzo Schifo. Do you know what Barry Horn says? That's the best player he ever played against. Was it, yeah? He Barry said Hull. he came back. I remember him coming back from playing against him. And and telling me, he said, Tiz, he said, I could not get near him. And Baz was like proper dogger, wasn't he? He'd get, yeah. He get so Barry Owen and Joe Parkinson, as a young Evertonian, were like the dogs up. They, so I always remember we went to Chester Races and a few of my mates were all Evertonians coming back and we went, went into a boozer after the races and Barry Owen was in there and he obviously was getting on Barry at the time and we were all over him going, fucking, wouldn't let him buy a drink, Barry Owen. And he was going, I think I was playing in the Premier League at the time. And he was, I was like, no, I was telling all the people who, I was like, this me, you know, growing up. And he was like, what? I was like him and Joe, Joe Parkinson. And he's such a humble, yeah. humble fella. I know he's an he international, and, and, but he was such a humble fella. And as I say, for the goal he scores to keep Everton in the Prem, it'd be touch and go this year. Um, he's like revered yeah. on, on, on Merseyside. Um, and as I say, um, I, I don't think he'd ever be able to put his hand in his pocket and, and, and buy in a buy a pint. And wasn't he an Everton fan as a kid as well? Something like that, yeah. I think something he was like an Evertonian that. As a kid, I, think. I think it was one of those moves where it was North Wales, wasn't it? I, I remember us signing him, and it was because we were fighting relegation, and obviously everyone's underwhelmed because we're the school of science, and everyone wants all these top players. And then we had this, as I say, this midfield of Horn and Joe Parkinson, who was a kind of Lancastrian no nonsense player and it just clicked yeah and they managed to win the FA Cup and stay up and you know there was like just a little a little weird era of Joe Royal which wasn't the greatest footy when you look back as I say ride out Graham Stewart um but as Evertonians we didn't we didn't have much to go off this we yeah. didn't have um we didn't see the Peter Reid pre Heisel area era, era because I think Evans yeah. greatest team broke up they'd won the Cup Winners Cup in in Feyenoord in I think 85, 85 86 was it? Yeah. and then Trevor Stephen lost 
uh, went. I think Lineker went. Uh, Gary Stevens. Lineker was only there a season, wasn't he? Yeah. He a he, he, it was a great season. Yeah, but then Barca come and uh, I mean, he, you know, it's almost like he never played for Everton. Lineker, I, I can't explain that to you. Yeah. Even though, like, some strikers come and have one season and, and they're still, re- like, but it, it's almost like he never played. I can't explain that to you now. Mm. The Evertonians never talk about him. Yeah. He's never mentioned. But he doesn't really talk about yeah, he doesn't, Everton yeah. much either, yeah. does he? It's like Shearer. Shearer, if you listen to Alex Shearer on the telly, you never knew that he would have played for Southampton. Does he never mention it? But he made his bones at Southampton. They give him his chance. And... You know, it wasn't like he was just there for one season. He was no, he was there for until Blackburn four seasons. Yeah, what the Blackburn played three point seven five for him or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I remember him going for big money to Blackburn. Um, in the early start of the Premier League, that was first season. And then that famous, obviously, um, Shearer Sutton, the SAS, and obviously Jack Walker was Abramovich. Bankroll on the team before it was kind of Liverpool. Liverpool fans always moan about net spending at these Liverpool fans. I say Liverpool, all I've ever known Liverpool do is buy the best players. Yeah. All my life. You know, like they might have won leagues all my life, but they've always bought, you know, whether it was Stan Collymore or. Um, but he was British transfer record at the time. Like he was. not bought the best players. Liverpool, all my life, I've bought the top. End players. The best players in the world. Well, Alisson and Van Dijk, when he's bought them, were the best players in the world. I don't think Van Dijk was at the time. Andy Carroll was at the time. <laughs> Van Dijk was. Van Dijk was, yeah. Van Dijk at the time. Final question, come on, we must be done here. We'll go go Van Dijk was the best right. centre back in the Premier League when he, when he bought him. Yeah. I, I scored against Sot for Burnley on my first game back from the band. We beat Burnley, uh, Burnley beat them at Old um, Turf Moor. And Van Dijk was playing, and Charlie Austin was playing for Southampton at the time. And I said to Charlie, like he was, I went, and he went, he's, I haven't had, he's the best. I haven't had a fucking kick in for six months in training whenever I play against him. Like he said, he's the. I was like, can he go on? And he went, no, no danger. And to be fair, I think Liverpool took him. It was, in the quite, it was quite funny. I was on soccer Saturday because he was playing at Southampton, and I was watching him play regularly, and I was like, unbelievable. And I would go on soccer Saturday and I'd go, we'd have these debates about who's the best centre back in the Premier League. And like Tomo would have his say, Charlie, and I'd go, Van Dijk. And they'd go, ah, oh, just because he plays for Southampton. I went, I'm, listen, I ain't like that. I ain't biased. I'll tell you, he is the best centre back in the Premier League by a mile. And then they all kind of fogged me off a little bit. And then Liverpool bought him. And within three months of Liverpool buying him, Tomo was going, yeah, best centre-back in the Premier League. And I was sat there going, oh, yeah. It's oh, easy yeah. to say about the horses after they've won the derby. You go, oh, I've always said yeah. that was a nice horse. I've always said it was a good two-year-old who's going to train on. Um, the, so before you get into the last question, I was going to say there about, about um, Van Dijk. How, did, how does he go to Celtic? How does every... Because I remember watching him and there was a big... Ho- everyone was watching him at Celtic. He goes, for, I think, from Groningen to Celtic. Then he has a good spell in Celtic. Everyone's watching him. Then he goes to Southampton. Everyone's still... Ca- like, if it was that easy, surely someone takes him from Celtic at 10 million quid to Southampton 12, play for 12, 12 million was, quid. Yeah. Rather than 70, 80 million quid. Yeah, 75, yeah. Which actually in the modern market looks quite cheap, doesn't it? You go, yeah, you pay that for him. <laughs> um, go on, last question, Josh. Uh, most, probably the most popular question. Who do you think will replace Klopp at Liverpool? I would say Jabby Alonso, Alonso has to be favourite based on the noises that are getting made. But I could see... I could see De Zerbi from Brighton. I'm, yeah, I think he's a bit think, of an outsider, but I like him. I think they're the two for me. I can't, I'm trying to think. Would Ancelotti leave? He's leaving Real Madrid at the end of the season. Would Would Ancelotti take it? I can't see it after him managing Everton. He looks like he's going Brazil. Could Tuchel or someone come out of? Could Zidane? I can't see Liverpool going for that type. Graham Potter's not Liverpool's type. What about the Simeone? Do you reckon he'd match with Liverpool? Is he in a job? He's doing an all right job though, isn't he? It's, it's kind of who's out with a job. Javi's coming out with a job. Javi Hernandez, he's got no affiliation with Liverpool. I'm just trying to think who could do, come do in. Do you think it's a big risk for Alonso at such an early stage of his career? 
I do, but then I think the way Liverpool have bl bled a lot of the youngsters this year, I think they look like they're in the transition fade phase. I think Klopp is not getting the best players and a manager at that level, like this fella. Guardiola wants the best players now so he can win trophies to cement his legacy as one of the greatest coaches. And I think Klopp will pop up at probably Real Madrid. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if I seen Klopp managing Real Madrid next season. Yeah. Mbappe, Vinicius, and goes, right, I'm going to win European Cups here. Sorry, Liverpool's not as sunny as Madrid. I've had nine years there. <laughs> Fuck you. Yes. Um, <laughs> as, as, as much as it is Liverpool fans will hate that because there's no bigger club on the planet than Liverpool is but Liverpool obviously not as sunny as Real Madrid no? it is I think Anfield's uh, got a better well yeah I mean it depends depends um, which Liverpool fan you speak to but they won't have anything negative said about Liverpool so like no it's not too bad to be fair but that's on that's on the other side yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which yeah side, so. but it's got points deductions on it so you can see why we think it's great um, <laughs> but when I look at Liverpool I think it's an enormous risk I thought Gerard was the kind of heir to the throne but obviously it's not quite gone to plan Javi Alonso looks like the the Manchurian candidate doesn't he look like the next as a player. fan, I would be ecstatic with all the dogs. Would you? After and the and after this season. The Zerbi, I wouldn't be as ecstatic. But after watching Leverkusen this season, still unbeaten, Andy, by the way, which is incredible at this point, the only team. But the style of play, I don't know if you've watched any videos on it. Yeah, but he's back three, isn't he? So 3 5 2. So do, like, would you want Liverpool to play 3 5 2 next year? Trent is a wing back. I'm a. I know you, you already kind of play this time. Liverpool there, have never back. played a back three, have they? Anyone ever remember Liverpool? No. I can't ever remember Liverpool playing a back no, three. Against Fulham, they? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying it's it's a fundamental shift for Liverpool. But then, you know, where else are they turn? Who do you think to you see anyone out there? It doesn't necessarily mean if if Alonso is a good manager and he's assessed the players that he's got there and he thinks that three five two is the best system for that team. He comes into Liverpool and assesses the players there and goes, well, actually, back four is going to be better here. Yeah. Good managers will, I think, good managers will play to the strength of their squad and not impose their will on the squad. Yeah. Or you have your you have your way that you want to play and then you have a owner that gives you time to bring in the players yeah, that want to play that system. Specifically. But you've got to give him time to do that. He's like the yeah. old child though, isn't he, Alonso? Because he's had what you, Pep, uh, Mourinho, Ancelotti. Yeah. He's had them all. Yeah, Benitez even when you Benitez, think back, like that defensive yeah, like structure. Benitez, 2005. He'll have had Del Bosque with Spain, and even though Jabby Busquets and the others will, will have played, Jabby will, you know, he famously got studded in the chest by Nigel De Jong in the final, didn't he? So he'll have expert, you know, he's won not only everything at domestic level he's obviously got all the internationals so he's actually you go yeah this fella he was a slow midfielder I think slow thinking midfielders have a natural advantage when it comes to coaching because we're connected to everybody in terms of if the left midfielder and the right midfielder are at the right distance and you're the right distance from your centre half and your centre forwards all the team's in position if the centre mids get out of position tactically the whole team can be out of position so I always think Central midfielders have a natural advantage when it comes to coaching, just because they do it yeah. as the job. Then he's got played for every major club that you want to play for. Liverpool won European Cups, scored in the final. Real Madrid the same, as you said, Guardiola and Mourinho, plus Del Bosque. You're actually looking at him going, he's the only man for the job, aren't you, really, when you look at it? Speaks multiple languages, lived in the city before... Do you not think, um, though, that they need kind of like a bit of fodder? Just to no, Liverpool have always had a kind of boot room culture, haven't they? I think it works really, really well to have one of your own come out. I think I think for Liverpool, Xabi Alonso could be a manager for Liverpool for the next 20 years. Like, let's, let's, if Klopp's going to go and you go, right, Klopp's done phenomenal for Liverpool, put them back at the European uh, Super Club table from... In editing a team from Brendan Rodgers, Roy Hodgson had a 
maybe lost its 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 place at that elite table. I think Klopp certainly, in terms of the players he's uh, attracted to the club and and obviously putting them back in winning the league and and European Cup. But but would it be even better if Jabby Alonso builds a dynasty at Liverpool? Being an ex player, I, I think it could could be a fairy tale. We've just had a message from a, a Mr. John Bradley there. Johnny Bradley. Saying Dalglish used to play at three at the back. Didn't Did you he? Know? No, I didn't know that, no. Mr. Bradley's there. Dalglish played at three at the back. I didn't know that Liverpool played at three at the back with uh, with um, Kenny Dalglish. No, I didn't know that. I mean, I mean he's, he's had to go a long way back to find a three at the back there. <laughs> yeah, for, well, he's a Liverpool. He, he, work, he works for uh, <laughs> Liverpool, so he'd be a bit of a stat. But I can't even, ever remember Liverpool, you know, Again, I'm only talking probably 86, 87 onwards when I, I'm watching the footy, but I can't remember them playing back threes. I know I know um, they've had little spells and Glenn Oddle made England a back three team at one point, but predominantly Liverpool have always been kind of 4-3-3 three, three for me. Um, so if the, if Jabby Alonso comes in and he switches to a back three, but then you look at the players, yeah, possibly would suit a Trent. Would it suit Andy Robertson? Possibly. You know, he's, they play like that anyway, don't they? They just... Pretty much, yeah. You know, even with Fabinho, Fabinho would kind of drop in and be that holding midfield player. Yeah, it's not um, too much of a stretch, is it? When you if you've got a back four, if you've got two fullbacks that love to fly on, then it's just natural for that centre holding centre midfielder just to drop and sit in. almost make your back three. So I, I think I think Liverpool will have to recruit a defensive midfielder. Um, in, in terms of I think McAllis is playing there, but you would look at Fabinho, Henderson going, Milner going. I think Liverpool need to take somebody and, and obviously they were after Saicedo and Lavia oh, although they turned them down. And that was our best player before he left for the... Yeah, but I, I would I would imagine if Liverpool won a... Club of titles. I think they, they've clearly can identified just, it. Can I just clarify what you said then? Did you just say... Endo. Hendo was our best player before he went to South... Endo. Sorry, Endo. The Japanese, no, the Japanese player. I thought you were, I thought you were no, talking about... No, Jordan no. Endo. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Endo is... What? Yeah, yeah. No. He's talking about... En- <laughs> this is confuses a lot of people, yeah. Because oh, the Scouse accents, Endo. but... Yeah, Endo, Endo. Was, uh, Endo was our best player before he actually left the Beach Cup, I thought. He's gone. Now to, yeah, he's gone with Japan. Yeah, yeah, you got it there. But I know <laughs> you mean about him. He's not the player. captain. Yeah, he's a good player. So okay. listen, Tis. Again, I can't thank you enough, mate. Thanks for coming. Great, mate. Enjoyed um, it. Yeah, really, really enjoyed it. And as I say, uh, thanks for everybody sending the questions in. Hope you've enjoyed it. First one. So if you're going to lose your uh, um, match day uh, watch along virginity with Matt Latissier, <laughs> is the is the perfect way to do it. As I say. Um, Love watching you play growing up, mate. You inspired so many, you, um, so many games of football, and we all wanted to be here. And as I say, um, to see you take the stance you've taken and stand up as a champion for 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 the just cause and uh, for what's right and the truth in this world, it's been an inspiration. Thanks, mate. as much if not more so than what you did on the football pitch. So, thanks for being you, mate. And um, as I say, I can't thank you enough for I'll for joining change. us. I'll never change. Good man. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>